everybody doing? I don't know what the topics are yet. Doing good. What's up? What you? Uh, I'm a little frustrated. You know, last second cancellations are always frustrating. Uh, we had two last second cancellations for those in chat. Uh, actual Jake and Denims, neither of them will be appearing on today's show. Actual Jake canceled about three hours ago. Denims, five minutes ago. So, we're going to go into the show without either of them today. So, anybody who was here from their communities, I'm very sorry that they uh, canceled last second. Uh, so, we're going to go in. Hold uh, on a second. Go into the show, though. We're going to keep on treading without Show must them. go on. Uh, slightly frustrated, but still uh, living. So, we're going to go on. So, Welcome to the Hippie Dippy Roundtable. I'm very happy to have you all here to discuss the issues today for this week. As always, I'm going to go through the rules. The first rule, of course, is to not break any terms of service uh, ter terms of service for Twitch. If you do, you will be immediately booted from the panel. I would like to keep my channel. I would like to not be homeless. And you know, the, evictum, uh, the eviction moratorium is about to end. So uh, now more than ever, I need a job. So please do not get rid of... Uh, break any uh, terms of service uh i would really like to keep my i'm job. a consummate Secondly, professional we will always remember that people's central identity on this panel what does that mean you will not be going after people's race sexual uh, uh, orientation uh gender identity or anything of that sort i will make the determination if you're doing so this also in includes religion so let's say that um Agent 10 uh, turned over to Connor points was like you are christian you fool you believe in the jesus that's terrible I'd be like, hey, hey, we need to stop that. Unless no, there's no destiny. It was a religious debate. I don't do, I would like to I don't do shows of that destiny. sort. Unless the person uh, themselves has like brought up their own religion. It's uh, a hard rule for me. Understand that? I don't that do idea. It. Fuck him. Okay, wonderful. No slurs. Just don't use them. Um, hopefully, you guys can be a little bit smarter than I, hypocrite, and not use slurs today. Okay. I think so. Uh, when I am speaking, no one else is speaking. I am just speaking to moderate. No other purpose. So I'm not doing it to give anybody uh, a certain advantage over others. I'm just doing it so we can have some law and order, which this panel needs. The panel C needs more law and order. Amen, yee yee. Uh, other than that, I think that's basically all the rules. You will all have a one-minute intro and one-minute outro segment for each topic. Is there any confusion about the rules? Anything that people would like to clarify? Nope. Wonderful. So we're going to go around the room, and everybody's going to introduce themselves. We're going to, as always, start in the top left-hand corner with Agent 10. Hello, everyone. I'm Agent. Uh, political beliefs. Uh, I would say I'm myself a moderate righty. I'm 20 years old, college student, BFA, uh, blind design dude. Uh, I do a bunch of stuff on Twitch, gaming, some politics, some media stuff, breaking down movies, TV shows, and uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Happy to have you here. We're now going to throw it over to Aircraft Sparky. Hi everyone, I'm Aircraft Sparky. I am a nationalist conservative who firmly believes that we need to be focused more on not just America first, but America only until we actually fix the problems here in America. Um, I am a, I'm a Jew with Jesus, if you will, a messianic Jew. I do follow religion. I'm not religious. I'm disciplined. It's a little bit, a little bit of a different idea, but if we're, if we ever talk religion, you'll, you'll get my, my little breakdowns on that. But yeah, let's have fun tonight. I'm sure we'll get into the depths of uh, the Abrahamic faith during our gaming conversation. We're gonna go over to Connor Points. My name is Con. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Connor. I run a YouTube. I am uh, center center right. I am a science fiction, politics, and philosophy nerd. So I break down uh, popular media along those lines. Doing Full Metal Jacket, End of Watch, Warhammer Forty Thousand, and Halo. Now getting ready for Halo Infinite. Pretty excited about that. Um, so if any of those subjects interest you, I also do panel shows and rants into the void about politics. So come on over, type in uh, counterpoints, comments, going into YouTube and you'll find me. Wonderful. Now we're going to throw it to a last minute replacement that I deeply appreciate, Demon Mama. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the topic of a many of a very controversial uh, decision as of recent uh, with the Hippie Dippy uh, Championship. Uh, disputed, but uh, uh, we, we all know at home uh, the truth of the situation. We're throwing it over to uh, Demon Mama. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Demon Mama. I'm a political edutainer on YouTube and Twitch. Um, you can follow me pretty easily by going to my website, demonmama.com. It's right on the screen. All my links are there. Um, really, really looking forward to uh, hanging out with y'all and uh, talking about the topics. Um, and uh, it looks like we got some pretty interesting topics coming up. So thanks for having me on. I know it was a last minute thing, and I apologize if I'm a little underprepared. I didn't know I was going to be on until just about five minutes ago. Uh, good to see you all here. And I really appreciate the last uh, second help. And if anybody wants to go over to a channel sub and supporter, I 
appreciate that. Now I'm going to throw it over to Hunter Avalon. Thank you, Dylan, for having me on. My name is Hunter Avalon. I uh, am a former conservative turned social democrat. I do streaming on Twitch and YouTube, so you can check out my YouTube channel or my Twitch. Thanks again, Dylan, for having me on, and I'm looking forward to talking about our subjects. I'm also very excited to talk about porn. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, we're going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Hey, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, my Twitter and Twitch are the same, which is twitch.tv or twitter.com slash Joe Lewis with the O being a zero. Okay, I'll flip it. Um, Thank and, you. Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think very he flips it. Have you. It's all good. Now we're going to throw it over to Maddie. It. Another uh, last second replacement. What did I do I wrong? Really appreciate it. No problem. Hi, I'm Mad Kate. I am uh, personally a leftist uh, social democrat, but I like to think of myself more it's as for us, a but it's not for them. socialist. You um, all already follow me. And I uh, religiously, I used, I was raised Catholic. Uh, I'm no longer religious, but I see value in um, churches or religious gatherings as like a communal space. Um, so I do see value in it. So Wait, were we supposed to say our religious? Space. But oh, well. I'm really happy to be here. And I, you know, I'm usually on panel nights. But yesterday I did tarot readings, including one for CTV that was fantastic. So who knows? Maybe uh, maybe I'm a witch. We'll see. Was the championship in his future? Oh, uh, that part said ask again later. Ah, makes so sense. We'll Wait, were we supposed to list we'll our to religious <laughs> affiliation? Um, no, people... Well, you could. Just, you oh, could. The trend of okay. Doing it. I don't know why. I um, hopped on the bandwagon. Yeah, I am the <laughs> queen of hell. During conflict. Yeah, I'm, I'm the queen of hell. Uh, my imps uh, worship me, and so should you. Um, uh, I am the god of all of the hells, and I apologize for any uh, hellish uh, creatures that escape. Thank you. Wonderful. Keep your Bibles close. Throwing it over to Kevin Gasly. Yeah, thanks for having me on again, Dylan. It's great to be back here. I gotta say, I think the Hippy Dippy Roundtable is one of the best things on Twitch. So if you guys aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe to Dylan Burns. And also, while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I do daily content. I do daily premieres to YouTube. And I do daily live streams as well to Periscope, Twitch, and YouTube at Superpower Broadcasting. I'm a feminist. I'm an anti-theist. I'm a liberal hawk and a liberal unilateralist. I believe that basically in uni uh, moral universalism that the west is the best and that everybody in the world should have the same freedom and opportunities to not have to deal and live in fear of terror and gulags and starvation etc so in that sense i'm also a liberal capitalist and you can check me out over on uh, superpower broadcasting i mostly focus okay. on foreign policy and security analysis and that kind of stuff but i've been branching out to talk more about social issues lately and it's great to be on this panel i'm looking forward to talk porn games and uh, i believe we're talking the olympics too so <laughs> the olympics one was a last second decision there was just not a lot of interest generally for the last topic so we changed it to the topic which is actually the first of the night which is recently there's been a lot of controversy at the olympics uh, about protests and recently about a certain uh, olympian who is quite awarded pulling out of the olympics due to mental health reasons this has generated many responses online, many people saying that this is important for mental health for her to do this, other people saying that it was disrespectful to the United States, which she was representing at the competition. So we're going to go around the room, have people introduce their opinions on the first topic before opening up into a general open format. We're going to start, as always, in the top left-hand corner with Agent 10. So, um... I, I wouldn't say it's disrespectful to America. I would say it's extremely disappointing. Um, she is one of the best, if not the best, gymnastics uh, Olympian ever, given what it is. But I understand that you have to take a step aside sometimes for your mental health. I would say for the most part, though, she definitely choked and let people down. Whether it be people on her team who, you know, deserve the gold instead of silver, or like other people in the country who were um, believing in her to pull the gold home. I, I, I just think she choked. I think if you're an Olympian of that level, you should be able to go through with it. I, you know, it's just a personal thing, but mm. I don't think she dis, you know, was a disgrace to America or anything like that. Wait, he just said that. Okay, now we're gonna throw it over to Aircraft Sparky. When it comes to Simone Biles, look, uh, when you when you look at her performance in the past, this has been one of the the largest disappointments I think personally in her career. She's an amazing athlete, but part of competition is the mental aspect. There, 
for some reason, Ritalin, I guess, is banned in Japan. I, I've lived there for three years. It wasn't illegal when I was there. It's banned so by the Olympics. I, I don't know where that rule came from. But with her quitting, well, she stepped aside because she claimed she had mental, mental reasons. Look, okay, that's part of competition. That auto- automatically should take her out of the position of the greatest of all times or the GOAT because part of competition is actually being able to stay within the fight. There's a huge mental game when it comes to sports. And, uh, but she, that still doesn't take away from the amazing things she has done. Wow, I didn't and know that. She was much. actually That's mistreated wild. by the uh, Olympic Committee when it comes to how she was scored because they went on a base of equity. She pulled off an amazing, an amazing um, move during qualifications, which actually made the judges want to subsequently mark her down on everything she did. So she wasn't even being judged on an equal playing field. So I understand why she quit, and I think it was somewhat honorable that she stepped aside so the team could do better. She realized there was a problem, and the team would suffer because of that. So it's mixed feelings on that. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Connor Points. Yeah, so it's funny to me that modern Republicans are taking an opportunity to take a shit on one of the uh, best athletes who ever lived. Um, I think that if you watch Simone Biles and her uh, performance, I think there's even a documentary called Simone versus Herself. Um, they, you know, basically she's top tier in the world. So I want to quote one of the most base Republicans ever, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. It is not the critic who counts, not the person who points out how the strong person stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short and again because there's no effort without error or shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves of, in a worthy cause, who at the best knows he the looks end, younger now. the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if, if they like fail, the beard, at least fails while daring greatly. So, uh, so that their place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never do victory or defeat. And even with Simone Biles uh, withdrawing, I would put uh, her in that category absolutely. She basically does things that make my decrepit old ass embarrassed that Charlie Kirk uh, even dared to be like, oh, Simone Biles is a coward and a, and a wussy. And like, that's obnoxious uh, for somebody who probably couldn't do a single pull up. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. You just quoted one of my favorite historical quotes, period. Um, I really appreciate you quoting that quote uh, because I forgot it. Could you DM that to me? And next, Absolutely. I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah, I'm, I've been very uh, – this is a story I've followed sort of loosely, but I've been very surprised with the reaction of a bunch of people who uh, tend to uh, advocate against this idea of collectivism, but then the moment that they feel like they can say, oh, you've embarrassed our nation on the on the stage, blah, 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 then they can – you know, they'll just dig in on this. Um, listen, when you're talking about performance of sports at an incredibly high level, it is literally a matter of life and death. If you go, if you step up there and you say, there's no way I can do this, that's called knowing your limits. We encourage that because the worst, the worst thing you could imagine is somebody pushing past a limit that they knew they had a limit that they knew I can't do this right now. And then they go through and break their back on the world stage and then they never perform again. That is, uh, it is absurd that anybody has any problems with this whatsoever. I can understand teammates or perhaps people directly involved being somewhat frustrated, but that needs to be tempered with the very rea- the, the very truth that we are dealing with humans here. We are dealing with humans who are performing at a high level, and if you have had something that changes your the, the, the sort of stasis that you're in that you perform in at your best, that can seriously mess with your ability to safely perform um, what you're trying to do. I don't understand how this is an issue at all. This seems like something that's very um, invented and is, um, I don't even know. I don't even know what would come, what would justify uh, someone coming to the position of, of saying that there's something wrong with this. Uh, an athlete knowing their limits and saying, I can't push through this particular limit is, should be encouraged, in my opinion. Okay. Next, we're going to throw it over to Hunter Avalon. Yeah, um, obviously, you know, you have to prioritize your mental health. Um, it's true that being in a sport in general takes a lot of, like, mental energy as well. And then when you factor that in with being uh, known as one of the greatest athletes of all times, and then you have, uh, you know, this immense amount of pressure on you, 
I think that it makes sense that she may have really felt pressure and felt that it was necessary to take a step back. Uh, overall, I generally see this as kind of a non-issue. I see it as an Olympic athlete needed to take a day off. Who really cares? Um, I'm mainly just having fun laughing at the conservatives who, for the longest time, cried their little eyes out about women's sports. And now all of a sudden, because women, uh, a woman does something different that they don't like in the sports, suddenly they don't really care about women's sports. It's also really funny seeing conservatives. Someone mentioned it early. Very, They're being very uh, collectivist about this. Conservatives will very often say she should have put her own individual needs aside. Her own individual desires should have been put aside. Instead, she should have stuck up for the team. She should have stuck with the team. Well, these people are very often anti-vax. So what does that tell you? It tells you that it's ideologically driven. And yep. that's really true, all Hunter, it's true for these slobs like Charlie Kirk to sit around true. and stuff his face with Dunkin' Donuts and cry about an athlete. But that's all it is. It's ideologically driven. So... No, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters that she took a day off. <laughs> okay, we got to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Yeah, um, I guess generally speaking, right, like setting professional boundaries can be challenging in the face of pressure. I don't think anybody's going to deny that, right? And there's potential like discrimination, there's potential like adverse emotional impacts, all that kind of comes into play. And there's something powerful in, in saying no don't know. and choosing not to do something. Don't know. Um, something that concerns. I think, I think YouTube. <laughs> hey, thank you for the bits. Appreciate that. Different difficulties when racially minoritized groups say no, right? So we have to consider, right, that saying no you, does not always us. work in our best interest economically and socially, and that can lead to like institutional or social repercussions um, that can definitely impact careers. And I think that in the macro, we should praise Simone Biles. For her ability to say no in the face of this institutional and structural pressure yep. and social pressure. But I think we also have to recognize that the privilege that she used doesn't exist for all athletes. And if we make it a bit more like direct in the lens, doesn't exist for all black women. And maybe we can get to that today. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Okay. Next, we're going to throw it over to Maddie Cakes. I echo a lot of what I've heard from the other panelists, um, and I want to bring up another point that I think is important about why she decided to sit out um, for the Olympics. Um, she experienced what's more colloquially referred to as the twisties, um, and that's very similar to what they're called the yips for baseball players, and it's a sudden and unexpected loss of skills in experienced athletes. Um, so with a baseball player, that could mean like throwing bad pitches or missing, missing catches that you otherwise should have um, had. But for a gymnast, it could mean sustaining a serious injury. It means that like, while midair, they literally can't tell up from down. And when you think about just how many times Simone flips and finds herself upside down during her routines, this would pose a very significant uh, and serious problem. So I think it's good that she's setting these boundaries. She's recognizing that it's not only her mental health that's at stake here. There could be physical fallout if she were to just push herself forward. And I like that Joe Lewis brought up the privilege element of this because this isn't something that most women, especially black women, are uh, able to do. This is not a privilege afforded to them. Um, so while I think it's wonderful that it seems like we all are um, commending Simone Biles on having the courage to say no and to take a step back and set boundaries, um, maybe it'd be worth examining why we don't extend that same uh, feeling and uh, suspension of doubt for other women who do the same thing. Wonderful. And we're going to wrap up the intros with Kevin Castle. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. So my general view on this is that essentially it is kind of a manufactured outrage, as was brought up uh, by a couple of the guests here, that there is this basically, this almost duplicitous uh, outrage over 
uh, well, you know, it, it's this shame, is this cowardice, this sort of thing. It is interesting to me, down, and I want to point out just for the record here, that a lot of these critics that are now lambasting her over her decision here are the same people who just weeks ago were defending uh, Coward Crowder, Stephen Crowder's cowardice in, uh, in his, in his uh, refusal to debate Sam Cedar. And yet True. now they're, you're basically calling a... Uh, Simone Biles a coward because she didn't feel necessarily that she was in the mental state to do her job uh, properly here and give it her all. And of course, the downside uh, in attempting that would be I possible turned him down. serious life threatening injury or worse. Him down. As far as it goes in terms of the team, you have to consider people are saying, well, this is bad for the team. But going in, knowing that you're not at your all, knowing that you may seriously have, you know, an injury occur or something. And if that happens, if you're going out there when you know you're not ready for it, just for the glory or whatever, that's going to sacrifice the morale and the standing of your national team that happens to be there. And and yeah, I mean, the, the degree of injuries that we could talk about are pretty severe. She's somebody who for years has been on Ritalin, and now she doesn't have access to that. So that's not really something that you can necessarily train for. No problem, people. She I was just trying to make to, it work. Uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, provide... Uh, relief from her uh, ADHD to my understanding and so that's that's really the criticism here should be levied on Japan for making it basically illegal to have that if you're participating in the Olympics not so much on her because at, at Rio where she was able to use it she did you know she was the goat basically so th there you go uh, thanks wonderful um there doesn't seem to be much disagreement. I'll allow the conversation to go for a little bit, but if everybody's basically, you know, agreeing that we have the consensus, then I'll just move on to the next topic. So I'll well, allow open debate for a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, I, Kevin, never change, man. <laughs> never okay, change. Well, <laughs> no, I, I, think I, can, I think I can bring up the contention that, that we might actually be able to fight over a little bit because I, I think Aircraft Sparky brought it up, and I think while I did my quote, I still agree with this. Um, part of performing at the highest level possible is handling the psychological pressure. Now, I'm not going to pretend for a fucking second that anybody can probably hand a candle, uh, candle to Simone Biles at her peak. I'm not. But I am saying that, like, AAA status, multimillionaire, you're on the fucking Wheaties box and all that kind of shit. It's not just that you have physical talent. It's also that you have, like, the mentality and psychology to be in the limelight. And you also have the mentality to know that people are counting on you. So while I think that like in this individual circumstance, we can recognize that she's probably one of the greatest of all time, and this is a temporary slip, the reason why I did my quote at all is because I view this as a temporary fall, a temporary setback. I expect Simone Biles to say like, hey, listen, this is my passion. This is what I want to do. I want to be an example to everybody else, and I'm going to come at, come back, and I'm going to kick ass twice as hard. Um, so that's kind of where I'm giving the – I don't want to say a pass because she doesn't owe me shit. Um, but but that's where my the the thing that I'm trying to emphasize here is like the heroic struggle to high ideals and high achievement. Um, part of that is dealing with the pressures, and I think that was well said by Aircraft Spark. But well, well, no. at the same time, we I can found recognize. It. I found the contention. Well, well, it's, it's, I won't <laughs> say it's contention. We also got to <laughs> recognize that this is her last chance at competition. Right? Mm. She's 24 years old, so she's gonna age out. Now, if she comes back at 26, that'd be incredible. 28, even more phenomenal. But for a gymnast, she's incredibly old. And and again, it's it's weird to say that, that to call a 24-year-old old. But in, in regards to the sport, she's, she's definitely going to age out soon. So that's another thing to consider as well. Well, and she, I'm going to clear up. Sorry, Everyone kept saying that uh, Ritalin was banned in Tokyo, which it is. But there was an exemption allowed for her by the Committee of 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Oh. I'm going to put that in the chat, but there is an exception. Yeah, okay. I, I, look, it, um, it's like this. Uh, Jordan didn't get the yips. That's why he's the GOAT. When the pressure came on, he performed. Uh, look, He retired early and came back because of money. He, he did go to oh, yeah. He <laughs> performed. The, to be the greatest of all times, you have to take every bit of adversity, not just the physical, but also the mental. There's a cool. huge part of middle in the game. Simone Biles if she is off her her ADHD medication, if she is off Ritalin, um, oh, no. it is what it is. I guess Ritalin. I guess we could call a a PED maybe if she couldn't couldn't actually oh. perform without it. Oh but God! When it comes what does down this to take? It, I don't 
think it is. I'm good. You really, Wait. you really think LeBron was it? Like you, like hold on, hold on. I don't think LeBron. This is funny to me. This is funny to me. You think he's cheating? That is a flop. Wait, wait, is, okay, wait, one at a time, we're gonna go with Joe Lewis, because he was the first to grab it. Yeah, this is funny to me, considering that we know athletes in the NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, even the WNBA, use performance enhancers and different types of workarounds in the system to make sure they test positive or, or test, or don't even, like, test anything at all in their system to make sure they can still compete. So I don't know why, it's a weird thing to say, like, I don't know if you were going on or on that Where, hill, but it where's felt the really masculine close. privilege? Where, yeah. Where's the masculine privilege of the MLB and NBA and all that kind of stuff? You, were, I mean, I'm kind of interested about your guys' intersectional arguments because basically, uh, I think these things are things that everybody deals with in corporate. Sure, and I also, I also think that Olympic athletes probably know better about regulations and certain prohibitive and restrictive drugs than probably the olympics and they should have a seat at the table when it comes to regulation around these drugs and that's even something that olympic athletes argue that when, when they're advocating for the things that they that should be allowed and not be allowed they're never at the table so that's probably something to recognize before we start dying on these weird riddling hills you know yeah well, I, mean, um, I, I also think that like the PED. I think like, there's the a fact sim- is, you know to be the greatest of all time and to get multiple gold medals you got to deal with the pressure in fact is she did choke it's a bit disappointing. I'm not saying she's a coward at all, because I think it's stupid. No, but she's not a coward. In fact, she choked. I'm choke here. Wait, like, I mean, would you say wait, 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 this is so wait, silly. Wait, yeah. wait, Demon Mama was trying to talk earlier. Just want to make sure she gets the chance. The idea that like it's that it's a choke because you're having a a a a severe issue with your medication is ridiculous. If somebody walked out and snap and their and their their ankle snap, we wouldn't consider them uh choking. That's not choking. Um, Her like ankle this didn't is, snap though. I mean, nothing like that sort. Yeah. Yes, that's what well, I'm saying. I'm saying that we. Your point, and then you can yeah, respond. I know you're very eager to get in here. Um, the 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 point that I'm saying is that we devalue um mental health, and if you're we're talking about somebody who's performed at the top of their game, um, for a very long time, this is somebody who has undeniably, undoubtedly endured um the mental challenges of the sport. This isn't that you have to know. In in fact, what is it is a required skill to build mental endurance to know when you're at your limit so that you don't push yourself beyond it and and damage yourself in the long run. This is not choking. I think it's very uncharitable to call something like this a choke. If you if you get out there and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm having vertigo that's preventing me from be able being able to perform and I'm going to step down and take the, you know, the consequences for that." Sure. Um that's like a I think that's a brave and honest act. I don't know where this idea that this is a choke is coming from. You're disappointed as a spectator because you don't get to eat your fucking popcorn. But this is somebody's life, somebody who's performed incredibly well and who's absolutely proven themselves capable of engaging with the mental challenges of sport, but just had something come up this time. And it sort of speaks to our our society's general approach towards mental health. I don't know if you know this, but the brain is an organ. It's in your skull. There are chemicals that are changed inside your brain. There are fu- there are neural pathways that can get fucked up, and that is just as real, just as material as a broken ankle. And if you don't acknowledge that, you're just denying the existence of the brain, which I think is a very interesting position. Okay, we're going to start with Connor, then uh, we're going to go to the other people on the list, like aircraft and agent. Yeah, no, I, I think I think this is a really interesting take. I, I'm I'm interested in kind of uh, exploring it because what we're talking about is psychological or mental injury, and I think that I probably was raised with a different mentality. So I, I understand what you're saying. It's a it's an organ. It's capable of suffering injury. Maybe it's uh, neurochemical, neurological. Maybe it's emotional. Who who knows what's going on? That it's interesting that we would consider um, a psychological injury on par with a physical injury because I, I would say that's a relatively new conception, probably in the past decade or so. So and the people used to think leeches, I, like. Would sure, you say? Sure, hold on, you, hold on. Well, well uh, to clarify, ahead. would you say yeah. that it's new or just now we're paying attention to it? Well, okay, so I. Yeah, the kind of injury is not new. The uh, paying attention to it is definitely new. Um, the the reason why I bring this up though is because uh, somebody asked me this about like endurance sports because they were wondering like on a marksman uh, marksmanship competition that lasted a week long how do you determine who is best uh, when when basically everybody is shooting bullseyes the entire time and what I said is this is a week long competition it's not about accuracy in the individual event. It's about consistency and endurance over a really long period of time. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the judgmental criteria we bring here. 
So it's not just right. and and here here's the thing. Like I don't think anybody here is doubting whether or not Simone Biles is a talent or the goat or anything like that. I don't think anybody's saying anything like that. Well, some are. What yes. I think is I think what's being evaluated is if we took even if we took the mental criteria as being evaluative and the physical criteria as being evaluative, did she perform to her best in this incident? Because basically, if we look at all other Olympic athletes, that is also the pressure that we're holding them to. Not just the physical strain, but also the mental, emotional, and, uh, you know, basically political pressure or, or social pressure. Yeah. And if they so. suffered an injury or if they had said that I, like, there is a pain in my body that is causing me to not be able to perform, I would imagine that we should treat them exactly the same. Go, oh, wow, like, that really sucks. Um, like the idea, yeah, so, like the idea mm -hmm. that like, yeah, we all, everybody, everyone, including, um, it, it, like everyone recognizes that part of the challenge of the Olympics is like, is like, there's an endurance mm -hmm. aspect, but, but be, being un being unable because of some sort of injury or some major complication to finish out the, the, the competition doesn't necessarily preclude you from ever having that skill of endurance, right? Like this is somebody who's proven that again and again. Like nobody has, nobody can perform to their 1000% every single time. And sometimes you just get unlucky. Sometimes something that happens, you can't power through it. And I think that given that this isn't like, yes, it's the Olympics, but like, let's be real here. It's still entertainment. It's still sport. That's it. It's not war. It's not a matter of life or death. You have to put your well-being first. And I would say that an athlete who has, who's 24 years old and has their entire life in front of them probably doesn't want to snap their neck doing the hardest the, the hardest performance of their life while they're while they recognize that they have they have reached a limit that's ridiculous well, these are un well, unbelievable Mama, my, my question to you then Connor, is, but then we gotta go down the other yeah place. yeah my, my question to you and i'll yield the floor is, is basically like is there anything that you've said in the past minute about the variables and factors that also doesn't apply to like physical stuff that that would be my question and i don't need an answer i just want you to think about it because I basically think everything that you just said about mental injury would equally apply to physical injury. Well, of course it would. Of course it does. But you have to realize if somebody walk, if somebody, if, if a, uh, a, an athlete walks out and there's, they have a sudden shooting pain in their leg, um, because I don't know, maybe a blood clot happened and it literally killed their, the oxygen in their leg and their leg is not working properly. Right, right. They're going to sit that out. They're going to, they're not going to, I listen, mean, they might not, they might choose not to listen. All I'm saying is one of my favorite sports oh, heroes gotta, is a guy who played baseball on, on acid, okay? And yeah. he played like nine straight innings, and I think he well, pitched a no-hitter. That's great. Okay, we're gonna, he did pitch a no-hitter. We have to move on. <laughs> we're going to throw yeah. it over to Aircraft, then after that on the okay. list, Agent and Maddie. Thank you. Uh, I did my best. Mama, you actually had a good point. The brain is an organ, okay? I, I fully admit that. And the, the problem yeah. is, is she didn't sit there and talk about some type of pain. She didn't complain about vertigo. She is losing, she has lost some of her focus, and that could be part of the ADHD issue that she has. So, look, I, I actually applaud the fact that she decided to, for her own safety, step aside. But because of that, because, it, because it's not a physical injury, because this is something that is perceived, there is nothing physically wrong with her. Her stepping aside actually is a way of her giving up her status as the goat and because mm, part i disagree of the with requirement, you hold on hold on please part of the requirements in my opinion is when the going gets tough you step up to the challenge and you don't always win but you at least stay in the fight because look we can talk about some of the greatest the greatest athletes of all time actually failing at certain times and then they have redemption stories redemption arcs and they can still be considered the greatest and Look, Simone Biles has that opportunity down the road, no doubt. But this is actually going to be a big asterisk on her record. And look, it just is what it is. Just admit that at this point right now, ooh, that's a that's a bad thing. But look, we're not blaming her for quitting. I'm not saying it was a bad thing. She didn't let her team down. I think if she didn't feel like she could could perform at her top performance, her stepping aside to allow the alternate to come in so they could have secured the silver for the team. I think that is better than performing at maybe a 60% or whatever and hindering the team. So it's a, it's a mixed bag with me. I'm not, I'm not downplaying anything she has done. The woman is amazing. She is probably the best gymnast overall with stats. But at this one, at this one time, at the top, the top level, she got, as Maddie would say, the yips 
And, but the goats, traditionally, the tougher it gets, the less likely those yips develop. And that's really my entire argument here. I mean, so I, I do just you don't... believe that yeah, Simone is the greatest gymnast of all time? I think that she has the potential to be one of them. But right now, if she has performance anxieties that actually prevents her from achieving at the top level, and you have to watch her for the next couple of years just to see. She's, I mean, reti- she's, that- she's probably going to age out or retire. So let's just like kind of, okay, broaden this a bit, right? This is a, a gymnast with four gold medals, mm-hmm. over, I think, 20 world championship medals, okay. and then a couple of miscellaneous. I think she has over, I think, around 30 gold medals altogether, which, to the best of my knowledge, is the most bio gymnast. Check me on that just to be about. sure. It's in the top three for sure. So I don't know what else she can do in your eyes to put her as, as the GOAT. Like, Redemption arc. She has that opportunity. A redemption arc in retirement? Yeah. What's she going to do? Fucking go she like. She doesn't have to retire. You do realize that there are people in, in gym, gymnastics like that compete. This is this, this, this is a don't, die, don't die on this dumb hill. It exposes you don't know shit uh, about gymnastics. No, no I don't know a shit ton about gymnastics because okay, great. it's right. not my it's not my favorite it's my, sport it's in the world to watch. So the the one I'm tumbling right now. Would you hold this scene? Would you hold the same? There's a question. Yeah. Would you hold the same standard to like Barry Sanders or Michael Phelps? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Alvin Johnson. <laughs> yeah, sure. Amari, <laughs> yeah. Amari Stoudemire, Ray uh, Allen. I mean, I see, I see the Michael, direction you're Michael going. Michael Jordan. Michael yes. Jordan. Yes. So, so are you saying that Michael Jordan is not the goat? No, I'd say Jordan is the goat. Hey, no hold on, hold on. So. Wouldn't LeBron be better then? Because no, he never quit LeBron, his entire career saying LeBron, that he lost passion for the game. And he also got multiple rings on multiple teams. It seems like if we're going to be consistent with our logic here, then, then the Michael Jordan will never be number one because he quit in his prime. So if you listen, unless you want to try to die on this hill, it's a stupid hill, but you know, we can fight it. Listen, I think Joe Lewis is making like 50 different arguments, but the real argument he wants to make is that LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. Like, yeah, that's really it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just weird to me. It's just weird to me. It's just weird to me how you're holding this woman to this ridiculous standard. It's but then not at the a same, but then at the same time, like you, we're giving you, I'm giving you the context as to why she's probably not going to compete again. And despite of that, you still want a redemption arc. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, honestly, I I would say she did the right thing, even though she did choke. By definition, she broke down under psychological pressure, whether that be she didn't take the in, or you know she didn't have a bagel in the morning. Whatever it is, she choked. She's still a goat. She's still amazing as an athlete, probably the best gymnast of all time, most medals, whatever the hell. She's fantastic. She did the right decision for her health. I just think it's disappointing, and by definition, it's a choke. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think I would have done the same decision if I was her. I would have sat out, but it is by definition a choke. I I think that's I think that's a wrong assertion. I think so. uh, What? Okay. So Maddie Demon and uh, you were trying to say something, Kevin. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I largely agree with what Agent's saying, because, yeah, she's a GOAT, but technically speaking, it is also a choke, so, but I support her to do that, and I think it was the right decision, it's just, for the record, it's like, let's say you get 99% on, like, the toughest exam in the world, you technically didn't get 100, but you still got the top mark in the class at the end of the day, so that's, you know... It, 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 just for the record, it is still technically, and, and because we need to think of, you know, it goes both ways. If we need to think of mental health as an extension of physical health, that it's not just some imaginary stuff that people but with emotions care about. No, it is a real thing, and it has a real effect on your physical uh, capabilities. It's also true that, like, let's say you're one of the greatest uh, athletes in a particular sport, LeBron. but then, you know, you you disable yourself in such a way that you can't compete anymore. Not well, LeBron. other people are going to go on then, even if you're awesome. It is still technically the nature of physical athletics. So that's the issue. But I support her doing what she did. And I think that at the end of the day, her record stands for itself as one of the greatest of all time anyway. So. Okay. Oh, I just want to pause this. I hope Hunter Avalo didn't just choke. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where is oh, he? man. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> okay, he says his, he he uh, his stream crashed, but he's trying to get it back up. Hopefully, he will sure. rejoin because I, w- I would hate to have like three people just drop from the show in one sure. show in a matter of what like one hour. Okay, oh, we're man. gonna 
throw it over to Maddie and then Demon Mom. So I just want to take a quick poll uh, of my panelists. Um, I know we're talking about like professional athletes, but we'll dial it back and say, has anyone, was anyone like a scholarship athlete in college? Oh, just me. Okay, great. Um, so it's just been fascinating um, watching people who have never actually had to compete at a high level in sports talk about Ooh. what constitutes choking and what doesn't and what that actually means. Um, it's just I don't really think you said anything wrong, little money. There's um, two know. people oh, here who have a decade wow, in wow. violence. Oh, what the wow, fuck? Sir. Wow, sir. Okay. You can choke in more than um, sports. Thank you. Well, yeah. maybe yeah. you should choke right now while I finish, and then you can stop. Oh, oh. We're, oh. Like, we're going <laughs> How about this? Oh. So, Miles so literally has like a an actual move named after her because she's the first person who's been able to do it, and no one the fuck else has been able to replicate it. It is called the Simone Biles. I encourage you to Google that right now. Um, so like the fact that we're debating here on this panel with people who uh wouldn't I don't even know if they've competed in in anything whether or not they're the GOAT, as if we're the arbiters of who the greatest gymnast of all time is, that's rich. Or just saying that someone's choked. And I know um, someone mentioned, they said, oh, but it's not like she uh, she just got the yips, which is choking. Uh, first of all, it's twisties. And second of all, no, it's a legitimate like psychological issue. And it just demonstrates that you don't take mental ailments nearly as seriously as you take physical ailments and that's more reflective of the ongoing stigma with mental health in the first place and that's worth talking about right here like you don't take seriously that she literally when she was in practice had difficulty telling up from down mid twist the hippie dippy show her in physical danger and you're saying Little no money. but you she said yeah that's choking no, that's her looking out for her own well-being. Like, she pushes through plenty, but there's always a limit. And more athletes would be better served if they knew what their limit was. Because a lot of people end up fucking injuring themselves and sometimes, like, stalling or completely ending their career because they didn't listen to those uh, those red flags that came up. So... I wish yeah. more did. Yeah, I, I think there's another aspect of it, which is that, like, uh, the, the, the two people pushing back on this particular topic the most both were like, well, yeah, I recognize the brain is physical, but it's not really physical. And, and just immediately contradicted themselves. The reality is, if you're, if, okay, imagine it like this. Imagine if you're about to go up and give a speech, and you go and, and, and write, and, and, like, you've got time before the speech begins, and you go to look at your papers, and you can't read. For some reason, the word you cannot even see the words on the page. You might not know why, but you can't. That's not a choke. That's not you. Ch a choke is when you get anxious in the moment and you make a wrong decision. That's a choke. A choke is when you fuck up in the moment because your head's not in the game. A, a, a choke is not when you go up and you go, there's something wrong with my body. There's something wrong with the way that I'm performing. I need to sit this out because if I don't, I could injure myself. And the fact that it's being portrayed as a choke, that it's like, oh yeah, this is just emotions or something. Even though you're not saying that outright, you're just kind of like sneaking it under the rug a little bit. Um, I, I think that that's like, it really takes away from our ability to engage this seriously. The brain is a fucking physical organ. If you have a medication that you take because of, of a number of reasons like I mean god Ritalin is a pretty major medication and there's a lot of stuff if that gets messed up it can it can physically fuck with the function of your brain and that is something we should take seriously we shouldn't pretend that we don't just because you don't necessarily know all the details about it doesn't mean that you can just declare it as like a choke we know what a choke is a choke is you go to do something and you make the wrong decision and you fuck it up in the moment because your head isn't in the game or whatever we're not talking about somebody before they go into the game saying I can't do this because my body is not doing what it's supposed to do. There is something wrong, and I need to get this taken care of before I can finish it. These are completely different circumstances. Okay. Can I so, go, please? Uh, we, we have three people raise their hands. I'm going to go in the order at which I saw them. We're going to go Connor, Agent, then Aircraft. Awesome. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and push back a little bit. I'm probably going to say it on behalf of Aircraft Sparky here. Just because I didn't participate in collegiate sports doesn't mean that I wasn't involved in stressful things. I think I heard him say that he was a combat veteran earlier. I'm a law enforcement and military veteran. Got the sh my, I get my, the fucking shit kicked in for the better part of a fucking decade. 
I think I know what, like, pressure is, especially violence, when people are fucking dying and shit. So, yeah, I, I think I know a little bit about pressure. So, anyways, uh, per Wikipedia, which is the authoritative source on everything, <laughs> in sports, choking is the failure of a person or persons to act or behave as anticipated or expected. I don't give a fuck. You call it whatever you want. Ultimately, at the end of the day, words are fucking noises that us as hairless fucking monkeys make, and we're trying to make a descriptive fucking claim that Simone Biles, while being incredibly talented, maybe one of the most talented people on the fucking planet, literally has a move named after her or something like that, was going into an event, had a psychological issue, and thought that ultimately it was the best decision. You keep repeating things that is not in contest. Whether or not it was the right decision, everybody here agrees. Whether or not it was a risk to herself or her teammates, everybody here agrees. Whether or not she's talented, everybody here agrees. Whether or not she's one of the best of all time, everybody here agrees. So you don't have to caveat all this shit. We can boil it down to whether or not she had a psychological malfunction and whether or not we should care. One of the things that I've heard from uh, everybody here that I think is incredible, or uh, from the lefties or progressives here that I think is really positive, is maybe we should normalize recognizing psychological failure points in yourself before performance that way you don't hurt yourself or others and the reason why i would analogize this back to security forces before i yield the floor is basically that when there are military members infantrymen law enforcement officers who are having psychological or emotional issues it can get people hurt and get people killed and then on top of that i would say that when you see instances of brutality that is a form of cops choking they are having a psychological uh, psychological issue. They are fucking up, and they are having an outburst that is not within the performance of their duties. So I think these things are incredibly analogous. Yield. There's a lot I okay. could say to that, but I just want to say that if we're going by your definition that you cited from Wikipedia, that would also include mm -hmm. someone getting hit by a car. Because if the only thing that determines a choke is that uh, is an is a um is an uh, athlete not performing as expected? Well, that's incredibly broad. You get hit by a car, oh, you didn't perform as you were expected. Everybody expected you to do really good, but instead you got hit by a car. So I feel like that's a very broad and useless one. Also, I really don't agree with the uh, with the idea that like police brutality is, is representative of a choke. We're talking, I mean, there are situations in which this is recurrent behavior that a person has engaged in on numerous times. And there's also ca cases of police brutality where it's absolutely measured and not just a, a, a momentary break. I'm sure there are examples of police brutality where somebody uh, chokes an otherwise good person who normally per performs to their duty. But like the idea that all police brutality can be categorized as that or that even most of it should be, I think is very dishonest. Okay. Now we're going to throw it over to Agent Aircraft Vent Kevin. See, the problem is, I'm using choke is a very... I'm using it in a very liberal way. I, I, I want to remove the negative connotation here. Demon Mom was applying it super hard right now. I, I don't get it. I'm not saying it's a negative. She did the right thing. It was for her own health. Choking happens more than just sports. She broke under psychological pressure. If your whole sport was jumping over cars and then you got hit by one, well then, yeah, you fucking choked, Okay. Her whole thing as a gymnast was she was close to gymnast stuff. She wasn't able to do the psychological pressures. She choked. Okay. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It well, happens to everyone. It's a human response. Just, just for consistency. I don't know why we're loading it so negatively. Just for consistency, would you then also, and I'm fine if this is the conclusion that you come to, but would you consider um, a, a, a injury, like a severe injury occurring during a, or before um, an event as a choke as well? So, like, let's give an example. Um, if somebody was walking up to the, um, they were walking up to the, uh, to the, you know, the, 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 the stadium to perform and they stepped on a piece of ice and it tore a ligament in their leg, would that also be considered a choke? Because that seems like that would be a direct analogy, an analogy to this situation, but I highly doubt you would call that a choke. It seems like you uh, only no, want to call this a choke. Her getting the shakes, I wouldn't say would be equivalent to... Ah, but now you're saying she got the shakes, but we're not talking about that, and that's not the claim that was being made. It's not just a matter of the shakes. She got the yips, the shakes, the twists, whatever. Like, the twisties. It it's like the twisties. Twisties. Yeah, okay, okay. twisties. Yeah. She got the twisties. But, um, if, that's, like but if that's engine, caused... Engine. Um, but So you're no, inconsistent on this, then? The physical ailments. I wanna, uh, uh, it's, I a think... it's a psychological issue that caused the physical... I don't necessarily think Agent is on the same side that Sparky might die on. I think that Agent recognizes that choke is used in a pejorative. What the fuck is that word? What's pejorative? Pejorative. Pejorative. Yeah. pejorative. Sorry. So, like, 
But at the same time, like, I think Agent wants to have that word have a bit more utility outside of a negative connotation. Now, I would argue that maybe we should use a different word altogether, but I definitely see the idea of, like, hey, like, we should normalize people making decisions about their body. I don't don't think Agent's in opposition to that. Unless he is, I don't Oh, no, I don't know. Joe's paying me, right? He's paying me, right? Yes. All right, Sparky, what's this hill you're going to die on? Yep, Sparky. <laughs> oh, all righty, so, so, so Maddie, uh, uh, thank you for your service in the NCAA uh, combat field. You're so welcome. Um, it was my honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so let me let me tell you a story where I actually hesitated. Uh, just real quick, uh, I was actually an aircraft mechanic for special operations groups, and we, ran, we, we had to send all of our aircraft down to another area for some heavy maintenance while we were in theater. And so I got farmed out to a to a cab scout group where we had to go clear buildings. Because of my rank, I was I was made a fire team leader. And the first time that I had to go clear a building real time, I looked at my corporal and I said, Hey bud, I'm scared. If I hesitate, grab the back of my IBA and use me as a freaking shield and go to that damn door because we have to do this mission. We have to do this. So if I hesitate, you grab it, you push me through, and that way, because the first person in is the most likely to get shot. It's called the Cone of Death. So I looked over at my breacher. I gave him the signal. The door the door gets blown off the hinges, and I hesitated. I felt that on the back, and as soon as I felt his hand grab my IBA, I went right in. Now, you could say that might be a choke. You could say that might be a yip. Um, I would never claim to be the greatest at all at that. In fact, it wasn't my job. It was just an additional duty. You know, every every am I, soldier. Am I going insane in right now? Type mentality. But when it comes down to what it, it the, wasn't my this? job, and I failed for a brief second. In fact, uh, my my first uh, confirmed kill was actually a goat. Uh, that's a total other story. Uh, but yeah, it, it happened to be something of hey, you 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 see movement, you see it out the corner of your eye, and you fail to identify, and you fired. Luckily, I didn't fire on on an innocent individual there are always okay. performance issues um when it comes but like can we acknowledge uh, that like this is the olympics and not literal warfare like i feel like we're no, like wait, i feel no, like no, i'm no, kind no, of no. To to getting hit by this this guy, you guys miss completely wait, so, Mark, you know, no we have I'm really, I'm I'm really, really lost. Lost. and also to be clear we're about to we're we're gonna move on very shortly because yeah. this is mostly Am semantics in my opinion it's, it's not like a fundamental disagreement so I, i'm gonna Aircraft, like you can wrap it up, but yeah. I, I think we're gonna go into ending statements after aircraft. Um, everybody who raised their hand, you'll be able to make an ending statement during closings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just the point that you know when people go, oh well, no one else here has competed. Well, combat is a comp is a competition. It really is. And look, you don't walk away fun. with gold, silver, or bronze medals. I mean, you might get a silver or a bronze star, but really, the only way you win is to survive. So in that case, Maddie, I think you're a little wrong, and I don't blame you for it. Look, it, m- most people, if they haven't haven't been through that, they they don't fully understand. And gl- love to talk to you about it offline if you want. Okay, we're gonna start uh, top left hand corner with Agent Ten. Okay. Yeah. So um, obviously Simone Biles is greatest of all time. <clears throat> this one time she choked. She um. You know, because of psychological pressures, she, you know, cracked, she faulted. I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think if we, you know, try to destigmatize um, choking and instead of paint it in, like, you know, term that, like, everyone deals with multiple different industries, multiple different professions. No, this is aircraft sparking. you mentally and you don't, you know, go up to par, you're not up to snuff with it, you choke. It's by definition. You know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think she's one of the best athletes of all time, probably the best gymnast of all time, and I hope she gets well. And hopefully she'll be performing in the individual competitions later. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Aircraft again. Look, nothing but well wishes to Simone Biles. Um, I, I think she made a good decision for, for the team. She knew she wasn't in the right headspace. Uh, but it does put an asterisk on her on her record. Part of being the GOAT is that you have to perform at the highest levels. You, you rise to the occasion. Uh, I'm not saying she doesn't have the, the chance to still be the GOAT. It just kind of kind of tarnishes the record just slightly, and it's only because of that that failure to perform. I mean, that's what athletes are supposed to do. That's what that's what everyone in their profession is supposed to do. 
They're supposed to perform, regardless of the stress levels. She had a snafu. No big deal. So, yeah, it's a controversy, but decent conversation. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to counterpoints. I don't think I missed anything by comparing conflict to sport. If you actually look at the origins of the Olympics, it was Greek city-states that said instead of killing each other, why don't we compete in sport? I think there's a whole bunch of psychological analogies that are completely appropriate. I am happy to make them, no matter how frustrating they are to other people. And uh, basically, yeah, that that's it. So the if we were to pull something from the car wreck that is uh, Twitter discourse in reference to Simone Biles, then what I would say is that psychological issues should be maybe retreated as phys- uh, this, identical to physical ones, because as Demon Mama said, they're you know the brain's an organ. Um, And we shouldn't basically lambast people who had psychological issues when they were about to perform, but instead look at it as if you sprained your ankle. Let's put some ice on it. Let's figure it out. Let's get you back in the game. And on top of that, I think that would be quite psychologically beneficial because what can happen to people who uh, have a moment where they freeze or they shake up or whatever is that moment can stick with them for the rest of their lives because of the psychological stigma we put, we associate with choking. And then as a result, they have a psychological break or psychological freeze that they can't get past. I think that if we treated it more like a physical injury, then we would say, hey, pal, it's okay. Put some ice on it. Let's get you back in the game and then uh, start performing better. And I think it's a way healthier uh, perspective that we can pull from this uh, train wreck of uh, discourse on Twitter.com. Okay, now we're throwing it over to Demon Mama. Yeah, um, I mean, I think I made my main points clear here. I'm not really, I don't really care much for, like, people going back and forth about specific accolades or whatever. I just, I, I think that we have an approach that generally minimizes um, the physicality of mental health, and it's seen as, like, some sort of ephemeral thing um, that is just disconnected, and it's just something that you can will yourself through every single time when you really can't. Um, especially with stuff like ADHD, there is quite literally different wiring and different chemicals in your brain that are functioning in a different way. So I just, I wish people would take that a little better. I think that, um, using language like choke and stuff for something like this isn't really appropriate, but whatever. It seems like a semantic difference. Uh, as long as people are willing to recognize that like, uh, like looking down on someone for knowing their limits is like a really shitty thing to do uh and also like doesn't accomplish what you want it to accomplish um then sure i suppose that there's agreement on that okay get that over to joe lewis oh god damn it i guess i'm gonna channel my inner fanatic on this i'm very i'm just getting really tired of people trying to put asterisks on black female athletes on the internet. It's really just like ridiculous to me. Yeah. We did it to I mean, Serena true. Williams, whether yep. she's like, it's oh, true. she's doing That's steroids true. or she's actually just a man in disguise. We do it to Shakari Richardson. People claim that she's a crackhead or even a man. And in this case, like we did it with Naomi Ahsoka. It's either she's not black enough for, for people or she's not Japanese enough for people. And there's like different sort of like mental gymnastics people do to justify their racism. And something that I think that like is kind of concerning to me. And maybe it's just like, I'm not saying it's intentional. It's just really strange to me. We got to stop caveating black women. Like she's the greatest of all time, period. We're probably not going to see another athlete of her caliber. It is probably as long as we're all going to be alive. So just give her the goat status, give her the greatest of all time status. But don't go through the semantic caveat of like, well, actually, because she didn't do this here, we had to put an entire ass, we had to put an asterisk on her entire career. Like, that's this real ridiculous standard. You know, consistently, you wouldn't do it for other people, especially men. So we gotta just stop dying on we that. We do it hill. for honkies all the time, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, um, it's, it's, just ti- it's just tiring. And even in the face of like the women's USA basketball team, the most prolific basketball team in the Olympics of all time, and one of the most prolific teams ever gets slighted due to women's soccer. So it's just like, come on, come on. Like, yeah. I understand, like, it's very easy to dunk on black women on the internet, but just don't, yeah, don't do it on a panel. You know, like, she's the GOAT. Just say she's the GOAT. And then we can argue with semantics, but come on. The okay. only person who brought up race. We, okay, so let's be clear. It's funny, it's forward. funny, there's, it's funny the person. There, okay. Let's up uh, fucking. <laughs> okay, during outros, nobody else talks while other people are saying outros, okay? And they have to be funny, Connor. 
if you're gonna do it. But you gotta well, make it funny. You're talking, so I'm not gonna talk. Thank you very much. Throwing it over to Maddie. Yeah, I mean, Simone Biles made a really difficult choice. Uh, knowing that she's on the world stage, knowing that she had so many people who were excited to watch her perform, her teammates um, who were counting on her, she had to make a difficult choice, and she made a choice that prioritized her mental health. And I know here we may complain about debating semantics, but the reality is that the words you use absolutely matter. Referring to her looking out for her own mental well-being as choking serves to further stigmatize mental health. Yeah, it devalues I think it does. Yep. mental ailments and casts them as less than physical ailments. So if we're looking to um, make mental health more of a priority and to put mental issues on par with physical issues, watching the language that you use to describe them is a great place to start. Um, and that begs the question, why is this choking, but a muscle pull isn't? Why does this cast her GOAT status into question, but when any other male athlete, or any other white athlete for that matter, dropped out due to injury, seemingly yep. retain um, their prestige? And uh, lastly, I'll say um, the military is in sports. Gymnastics is in combat. Um, and it's not a question of who, if she gave into pressure. That's kind of de, uh, devaluing what mental illness actually is. Um, it's about paying attention to your psychological well-being. Um, and finally, um, I'd like to say uh, Charlie Kirk is a giant um, fucking baby. True. 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 Okay. Now we're going to throw it over to Kevin Castle. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, so I just want to quickly respond to uh, Maddie from earlier because I was on the list. Uh, to the point about the extent to which uh, we're qualified to discuss uh, the Olympics here, and particularly Simone Biles, uh, we were all invited onto a panel here on the Hippie Dippy Roundtable by Dylan Burns. And, you know, thanks for the invitation. It's always great to be here. But part of that is one of the topics that was on the list is we all get to give our opinion on the Olympics. And so now you, uh, the Maddie being uh, you know, somebody who's actually uh, scholarship level uh, sports, your opinion should probably be taken more seriously than a lay person like mine on this. But that doesn't mean that our opinion still isn't necessarily something that we could give. I mean, it, it's true for anything. It's like having an opinion on whether or not marijuana should be legalized without being, say, uh, you know, a judge or something like that. So uh, to my closing remarks in general about this, I, I think that, you know, she made the right call. I think that uh, at the end of the day, this will be remembered in the grand scope of her career. That's true with any high level uh, professional. I hold the same standard for everybody with regard, uh, you know, regardless of uh, race, gender, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you do need to realize that, well, if you don't compete, then yes, yeah, somebody else can, you know, uh, potentially rival your status. So that's very doubtful. That's very doubtful. And that's inevitable over the generations, of course. As it stands right now, no, she is the go. She is the go. It's just on a technicality, I agree with Agent 10. So um, anyway, thank you. Okay, now we're going to go on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. The next topic is one as old as time, but has gotten recent, uh, recently more attention due to uh, news about Blizzard uh, facing certain legal trouble. Is gaming culture toxic? And, past that, the industry as a whole. Is it toxic, or is it being misrepresented by uh, evil people trying to oppress the most oppressed group in this country, uh, gamers, once again? We're going to this time start in the bottom right-hand corner with Kevin Castle. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. So, I, I consider myself a casual gamer, I, I, I play some games. I, I like DEF CON. I like Fortnite. I like Call of Duty. I've been playing more board games recently, though, than, uh, you know, uh, online games. But I'll say this. When it comes to gamer Watch culture this. in general, is there a degree of toxicity there? Absolutely. I think that if people are going to deny that there's been a toxic contingent in the gaming community, especially in the last 10 years, they're essentially gaslighting you. They're, they're essentially... The hashtag wow. Gamergate bros that are, you yep. know, going to try to obfuscate any sort of uh, criticism 
of I didn't when expect to agree with this guy so much. Form. I mean, if games are like any other media, you do have to have criticism of that. And, you know, there have been, historically speaking, there have been various media figures that have drawn criticism of particular games. And I see that no different than, say, being a film critic or whatnot. You can disagree with them, but there is definitely, and there has been, a, a, a contingent. Now, it's a small minority, but there's a small minority of people in the gaming community because I don't think gaming it's small is such a large community, hundreds of millions of people, that, yes, they would try to delegitimize them based on troglodytic, uh, sexist, especially, uh, characterizations. And you saw that with the Gamergate. Uh, in general, in typical gameplay, there are, you know, uh, you go into random lobbies and stuff. Most people are pretty good. I mean, it depends on what game, right? But, I mean, everybody knows the meme about the Call of Duty lobbies with the 10-year-old saying gamer words left and right, right? I mean, there is, within gaming, some contingents of people that basically see it as, well, I'm anonymous, so I'm going to use every racial Yeah, Denim's is supposed to be on here, but I'm standing in for Denim's. As possible. I'm going to be as demeaning even to people on my own team as possible. And that's something that over over the years is definitely going to have to be resolved. And we're going to have to, you know, basically recognize that, yeah, you might be anonymous, but that doesn't mean that you could treat people like crap. It doesn't mean that you could just use all these slurs left and right. But the the magnitude of the people that actually do do that is still such a very small subset of gaming at large that to, on the other end of those who are more uh, critics of this that might say, well, gaming culture is toxic, they're extrapolating from a small minority and essentially casting aspersions upon all of gaming, which in my experience, That's most true, of gaming Leah. culture is actually relatively wholesome and inclusive. So thank you. Wonderful. Now we're going to throw it over to Maddie. Yeah, I think the gaming industry, like gaming culture and the gaming industry is extremely toxic. Um, it is rife with misogyny, racism, homophobia. Uh, the Activism, Activision Blizzard case um, currently being um, litigated in California exemplifies a lot of the biggest issues at the industry level. Um, this sort of boys club devaluing of the work of marginalized people like women and people of color. Um, and just as someone who does game a lot, I come, I, uh, come face to face with slurs, with really offensive language, damn near constantly. But I will say, as someone who's also been gaming for a long time, it has, I've seen the culture slowly improve at least in the spaces where I, um, in the spaces where I am. But I think there's still a lot of work to be done. And I think some of that starts with holding bad actors accountable and not just explaining away when someone uses a slur or uses really heinous language as, oh, but that's just gamer rage. That's what it is. Um, we need to hold people accountable if we want the culture to improve. So um, I'm interested to see where this case with Activision Blizzard goes, and I'm also interested to see what more gamers do um, in order to cultivate a better, more welcoming environment. Now we're going to throw it over to a person who looks like the... Is that a, is that a turtleneck sweater? Cat? Wonderful. I'm happy you could stop slam poetry for a single moment. To join our panel. Uh, we're going to throw it over to Kat. Uh, you can also introduce yourself as you comment on the topic, which is, is gaming as a whole toxic, and of course the industry as a whole? Um, so, hello. Uh, I am Robin. I do uh, VR for Spain, so I mostly... Uh, Very quiet. Boost, so I wish I could boost. Kind of hard to hear you. Would it be possible for you to uh, uh, understand technology? No, not for you. But uh, uh, Thank you. Okay, cool. No, <laughs> there. I'll use this microphone. Hopefully, that's a bit better. It's um, a little bit better. Cool. Yeah. So I'm Kat. I'm a physicist. I do Still quiet. politics and I do debates. Um, but also, uh, I answer this question. So let me do that. Um, so is uh, gaming like as a culture inherently toxic? No, um, I don't think anything inherently 
is toxic, and I think um, depending on like which games you play uh, really uh, fosters different types of environments. Um, you know, the environment of Celeste I'm is trying. like the same environment for playing um, Hitman. It's not the same environment for playing Battlefield, and all of these different uh, games foster different. There's types nothing of I can games. do. So inherently, yeah, there's nothing um, about gaming that makes it just naturally toxic. For some reason, specific types of games will really. Uh, foster a toxic environment um, but in terms of the workplace um, even outside of um, you know the current sexual harassment issues um, I think um, the gaming workplace um, breeds a lot of issues uh, starting from the expectation for people to uh, basically give up their entire lives to be at their studio all the time uh, crunch culture definitely does not give way to good mental health does not give, give way to good uh like relations between colleagues and then from there definitely does not give way to a good sexual relations in the workplace <clears throat> when you're basically living at your workplace um but uh yeah once again are those inherent no these are all just problems with like people trying to get like squeeze out every single like inch of life force out of you and uh sorry everybody i don't know sorry, what i can do that's my throat. that was me clearing my throat wonderful now we're gonna go to the top so we can mix it up, and we're going to start with Agent Tap. Okay, so first off, fuck Activision Blizz. I haven't, gave you know them, I haven't given this. them a single dime since the Hearthstone Hong Kong incident, and I refuse to even like, think of the possibility of doing it in the future. Um, I think gaming culture, especially like what, how we treat women, is extremely ho- horrible. I have a 13-year-old sister. I hear it all the time. She's a huge gamer. It's, it's horrible. I, I'd love for it to change. Um, but outside of slurs and demeaning people for their individual characteristics... Gaming culture being toxic in itself isn't specific or isn't exclusive to gaming culture. For example, Twitch politics, extremely toxic. I love hacking you and then I want to, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with you half the other time. So, you know, if I'm gaming with Joe Lewis and I, you know, I tell him I'm going to fuck his mom in the COD lobby, I, I'm fine with that, you know, I, I'm fine with that. But uh, when we start getting the other stuff, the gamer words, the whole slurs, everything like that, that's when you lose me. Uh, but gaming itself being toxic, I don't see it, but also, again, fuck Activision Blizzard. Wonderful. Um, this is some, somewhat on topic, but I would go a, a different angle than uh, the fucking of mothers, personally. Uh, we want to be inclusive here. That's you could get his father. I could get, the, I could get the mother. The, I, was not at, I was not saying that, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just going a different angle. We're going to throw it over to Aircraft. Alrighty, so so when it comes to to ideas of gaming, the gaming environment being toxic, uh, yeah, it's actually quite um, quite easy to see. With certain games, you're going to have different types of communities, I guess, and the toxicity of them will vary. Yeah, I'm absorbing usually the them more all. PVP style, the more confrontational people are in chat because they're trying to get you off your game. Go play football. Go get there on the line and see how linemen talk to each other. Uh, man, I have <laughs> I have heard some foul shit come from both sides on the football field. So yeah, um, who cares? Don't like it? Turn off the freaking voice. Oh boy, here we go. You have that option. Uh, when it comes to what's going on, the activism and blizzard, activism blizzard, all the stuff in the workplace. I'm gonna kill this after being um, a gamer I don't for my know entire everything life. That's going on in it. If there's harassment going on, there's sexual harassment, well, there's laws against that, and I guess that'll all get sorted out in the courts. I don't know enough to speak properly on that, but I've been in enough COD lobbies. I've been, I've played League of Legends. I've, I've played EVE Online for 12 years, for Christ's sakes. Top 500 in the world in PvP. It's, it's backwards yeah, on my side. It's not on happens. Dylan's. If you can't accept it, then don't play the game. It is what it is. Um... If you're allowing words to hurt you that bad, that's a you problem, not an anyone else problem. Get ready, everybody. Okay. We're going to throw it over to counterpoints. Yeah. I um, uh, I really bounce between what I want people to do depending on the day. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that I always recommend is treating people in the online space as if they were in the room with you. I think that's like my advice to very young people. Uh, because I want them to stop thinking of the internet as a synonymous space in which you get to say whatever you want and be as cruel or mean or manipulative or shitty as you want and uh, not face any kind of social consequence. So if you start uh, treating people the way you would in real life, then maybe we can reduce the toxicity of these spaces, including video game lobbies. That being said, I am of another mind where I am hoping that 150 years from now, 
um, you know, Joe Lewis's children and my, you know, great, 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 great grandchildren and Joe Lewis's great, great, great grandchildren um, are making fun of each other for their immutable characteristics, but in a way in which they both know that they're having fun. Um, so I flip one way or the other, depending on the mentality and depending on the day. And uh, I also have to wonder about the that. Um, so violence in uh, the United States has actually halved since 1990. There's a lot of different variables that contribute to this. Uh, improvements in medical uh, medical treatment is one of them. Um, and then basically uh, there, there's a whole host of other reasons that uh, basically this has happened. One of the factors that I think is interesting to consider, I don't think it's been studied, is actually video games. We spent a lot of time inside. We spent a lot of time competing with each other online. Um, I think that's an interesting variable that should be analyzed in the totality of the decrease of the human violence. And I'm wondering if, while disgusting, if this, this is a better event than what would human beings would do in the real world. So, more of a question than a statement. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. I have been a gamer for my entire life. One of the earliest photos of me is me playing a game called Degeneration on uh, my dad's lap when I was a tiny baby. Um, I have been involved in gaming very intensely for all of my life. I have, I've gone to conventions. I've gone to, uh, to I've, had, I've done tabletop games with a thousand players. Gaming is probably my primary like hobby. Like that's a hobby hobby. I don't make games, but I love them. I review them. I talk about them all the time. Gaming is fucked. I want you all to completely understand that. The, it's not a matter of intrinsicality. Like, I don't think that games are what makes this the, the way. But the culture in gaming is so rotten. It is so viciously bad. And we see that in reflected in the industry. And uh, the, the industry is worse than you know. Uh, if you think the Blizzard stuff is shocking, just wait. There's going to be more coming out, inevitably. A lot more. In fact, I was just on Twitter a few minutes ago, and I happened to see a new article has been... Prom uh, has been released speaking about another incident at um, Activision Blizzard. So this is going to continue happening. Gaming spaces online are some of the most toxic and intolerable places to be, um, regardless of, of who you are, but especially if you belong to a marginalized identity. Um, the amount of transphobia and uh, that I have received online, you might think, oh, damn, um, oh, transphobia, how are people going to know you're trans? Well, they hear your voice and they clock you as well, that's feminine, but it's not necessarily feminine enough. And then they say they're going to, I'm sorry to say these words, but rape me in a bathroom, which is something I've been told multiple times while playing video games. I don't play games on voice anymore. And you all know that I'm here debating with people, dealing with heat every single day, but it's not fun. I don't play those multiplayer games anymore because they're that bad. It's not just a matter of, oh, people shit talking. People go so far beyond they're so unhinged about the way that they defend this space that it actually makes, it actually damages the industry because the industry could be twice as big as it is if they fostered multiplayer game spaces that actually allowed for women and, and, and trans people and gay people to participate and people of color to participate without dealing with hate, but they don't. Gaming is misogynistic and chauvinistic to its core Every single festival, every single con that I've gone to, while there are many, many wonderful people, is pervaded by a persistent culture of disgusting, disgusting hate. And the rape culture in gaming is almost uncomparable. I can't even think of any other community I've participated in where uh, sexual assault and 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 just outright rape is 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 been made into a joke than in gaming. And all of it is under this backbone of, oh, it's just video games. Oh, it's just video games. But it's not. There's a lot of people working on those, making their livings on them. There's a lot of people who've made their livings uh, discussing these things. Sure, the games themselves are just games. But the culture around it is rotten to its core. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Oh, God. <laughs> um... I guess I'm going to speak on the behalf of the fighting game community here. And I'm sorry. Now I'm about to get dragged across the earth. Also, shout out to all the Ares subs. Also, Ares, you can go fuck yourself. Piece of shit, asshole. Ares is a um, variety streamer who commentates Tekken. And he said, dead ass, 
in an interview that sexual harassment is part of the fighting game community culture. And it's funny to me that one of the faces of Tekken commentary Thank has you, the Thank you. bravery in 2012 to make a statement like that. We have individuals like Low Tier God who openly told a trans woman that unless she, and I'm quoting here, gets her dick slit, then she's not a real woman. And if she doesn't go through that surgery, she's not that. And then when he got banned for that comment, he dug, and his community dug, through hours worth of content to find this one, the same individual say the N-word once, casually. And then all of a sudden, she gets banned. And then in the face of this individual getting unbanned by Capcom, there's still people who say low tier God did nothing wrong. What he said was justified because insert sexism, insert misogyny. And there's like, and then like, and then like, and what's crazy to me as a fighting game player is that. Yeah. Joe's awesome. Just, Joe Lewis is amazing. You know, like back in, I think it was 2016 or 17. Christopher Gonzalez, also known as NY Chris G said, and I'm quoting you. I live the scene. You know how many black quote girl gamers have to have to hit me up about sex, but can't even do a simple DP motion in Street Fighter. These are facts. The FTC stays away from most of them for a reason. And it's like, what the fuck? This is a dude who signed to Evil Geniuses at the time. Like, are you fucking kidding me? And that's just, and then all of a sudden, EG is like, we have now found this conduct and we consider it unacceptable. Motherfucker, you should have vetted this asshole. I knew Chris G is a sexist, racist, sexist piece of shit. I knew that Filipino champ, Filipino champ, uh, played in a tournament match, tournament match, during a money match, Kazunoko. He was playing, Kazunoko was playing somebody. Filipino champ took a picture wrote the F slur on it and put it in front of him mid match. And that just went under the rug. But then he gets banned for saying watermelon lies matter. Like I can't sit here and as a member of the fighting game community and not act like these spaces are incredibly toxic because they are, I think moving forward, we have to do certain mechanisms, right? I think we have to have better strategies for having to face this in the forefront. That's from the community leaders, those who are running the events, as well as the corporations who are running these games. We have to have better investment in community no, management. No, because it's one in the, the same, Kyle Marshak. And we also just so, have to expand so much overlap. grouping mechanisms so that people feel welcome in these spaces. Like, the fighting game community has a multitude of problems. I don't really want to get into those too, too much tonight. But it's it's insane to me how there's people who, like, I get you want to live in your little safe space Thanks, and your little gaming culture, and you think, like, this doesn't exist, but it does exist. And the more it continues to get ignored, you'll be fine in this, I guess. Like, you'll still pull money up your coin. But in reality, people are getting hurt in this. And if you're a leftist or whatever left-leaning thought you have and you just let this go on and on and on, you can just go fuck yourself. Like, you're, like, that's all I got for you. Let's party. Okay. Now it is open to the floor. You may begin. Yeah, um... I just want to talk about, like, I want to bring some attention to, like, two ideas. The, well, the, or two things. First of all, um, one of our fellow streamers on this platform, a, a absolutely incredibly um, talented uh, uh, gamer and streamer named Hafu, recently spoke about an experience she had in 2008 at a uh, World of Warcraft regional um, qualifier, internationals regional qualifier. By the way, Hafu would would go on to be the world's best, still holding that title, uh, Resto Druid um, of, 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 of all time. Um, and uh, at the time, she was 17. A team was allowed to qualify for the regionals and be posted up. She had to go up against them and see this on the leaderboards, a team that was called We Are Going to Rape Hafu at Regionals. And that was allowed. That was allowed by Blizzard. That was allowed by the esports people. Um, that is the sort of level of shit that we're going at. And has it gotten better? Well, in some ways, yes. And in others, in other ways, no. What has happened is that lots of marginalized people have made enclaves within gaming, um, guilds that are explicitly LGBT friendly, um, are a big portion of that websites that uh, sponsor guilds that are specifically LGBT friendly, but the culture itself has not changed. And I don't know if there is a way to fix that culture. 
I think that there's a, a good chance that we are going to simply have to build it all over again and get rid of the standards that we um, understand as the sort of backbones of gaming. Because as it stands right now, it is an industry that is the community around it. And, and gaming, by the way, has always been criticized for this, for having an enthusiast press, for having, um, you know, the community is largely made up and driven by the companies themselves. Um, so like there's this huge corporate aspect to a lot of the communities and that still holds to this day. I don't know when you have corporations that have basically built rape factories. And I mean that. That is what they do. They bring Chuck, people. Oh, well, we can't hear you. Wait, uh, your mic cut out. Oh, sorry about there that. I don't know what happened. Uh, Discord's a little weird. Um, I mean, we're talking about corporations that have functionally set up um, pipelines of rape where they bring in inexperienced people, uh, you know, women and, 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 and femmes, and then they bring them in and they're victimized. They're told all this is normal. One of, I, I did five, uh, pr approximately five hours of coverage of the Blizzard, Activision Blizzard segment. And one of the things that every single female victim who's, who came forward repeated over and over again was, I was made, I felt like I was the only one. The isolation is ridiculous. And these are structural. These are from the very top. And these same people who built these structures are the ones who then determine much of the culture. I think gaming is in a very, very bad place. And I love video games. I, I really do. But like, this is this is more than just a little bit of toxicity. This is a, a culture that has basically... Uh, that takes people, encourages them to get involved in things they're passionate about, and then completely destroys them mentally, physically, and uh, emotionally. That's horrible. And it is predominantly targeted at femme-presenting people. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> even, even in the fighting game community, it took a fucking village to ban OMG as Andre. Despite the fact that this individual openly whether it be through people seeing it happen or it being actually caught and dropped by other people of sexually assaulting women at multiple events. And then even in the face of that, it takes somebody in a chat when he's on the on blast show calling him out while he's on there. And then all of a sudden we want to take it seriously. And, and then like those other, other scenarios like Noel Brown, fucking Noel Brown groped a girl on camera at a tournament and everybody saw it. It was live in 4K on Team Spooky Stream. You see Noel Bow groping a girl on stream. And then it takes a village just to get him suspended. And even then, it took weeks. Like, it's ridiculous. And, and again, caught in 4K, clipped and shipped, and, then all, and, the, and, the, and the mechanisms that led to the actual repercussions took an insane amount of time, despite the fact that the evidence was right there. I think moving forward, there needs to be a stronger emphasis on community management and, and making sure the communities are held accountable, right? Like, again, like, I'm from a community where we openly gambled on stream, did, like, money gambles, despite the fact that it was illegal in a lot of states, multiple accounts of sexual assault caught on camera, multiple accounts of sexual de sexual deviance, well, I'll say in terms of deviance, people saying questionable things about people during, during mid-tournament matches from commentators, that's all caught in 4K across multiple fighting game streams, and this is just something that's been rampant. And then all of a sudden, like, there's been this sort of, like, drying period because of multiple, John, like, multiple, like, platform transitions of consoles. It's like, no. If you're a community manager, I think that for all communities, this should be your utmost concern. Because when you're looking to branch out for sponsorships and stuff like that, you don't want to have to answer to, like, why did it take so long for you to suspend OMG It's Andre? Why did it take so long for you to suspend Filipino Champ? Chris G. Justin Wong fanatic like why does it take so long to for these individuals which fanatic the repercussions the fanatic like and, and again he saw repercussions as well and like it, it's the issue here is is that especially in the fighting game community everybody has different examples of that and then even in the face of being facebook friends with these tournament organizers it still takes a village for these organizers to even see any type of repercussion and it's unfortunate right and again like i'm not trying to sit here and slander fanatic there but he can attest, too, about the abuse that's in that community. Listen, I can't speak for all the right-wingers here, but I am just itching to, like, you know, aggressively defend sexual assault, uh, mm. rape, uh, you know, racism, it's uh, the best. xenophobia. Like, I am just itching yeah. to share all of... No, get the fuck out of here. We're all on the same goddamn page. This is ridiculous. Exactly. 
listen into listen in 2007 i could have said some fucking age edgy shit uh and i'm pretty sure pretty much everybody when they're 19 and that's what i was talking about with event i don't want to punish teenagers for being edgy as fuck but i was actually racking my brain for something as bad as some of the shit you said and i just think these fucking zoomers are on some other shit like like seriously i like i heard a 9-11 joke about 10 years ago uh that was fucking uh you know hit me a little hard and i was like holy shit these fucking zoomers and fucking alpha they're gonna be fucking intense well apparently they all got together got on a 4chan board came up with shit that would offend me uh which is impressive and uh they did it so congratulations zoomers you've uh, you've officially destroyed free speech uh we well, don't need it anymore i, I, I think we I had think a good run as the zoomer i, here, I, I hear what you're well, i hear what you're saying <laughs> i'm gonna agree a bit with that i hear what you're I, saying I but the funny thing is wait there's two people talking at the same time um i i heard d mama starts i'm gonna go d mama first then agent then we're gonna go to maddie then cat and then man we're just going straight to the okay i'll be right back okay yeah we're gonna go d mama then agent Okay. okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think that there is plenty to be said about the the toxicity of like chat rooms and and in game stuff, but 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 it, it goes it goes so far beyond that. So there's been a lot of talk over many over many many years in gaming about how like the enthusiast press problem was was a huge issue. You would have uh you know the 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 gaming journalism and and not, you know GamerGate was invoked, but let's 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 separate this from the conversation around GamerGate. Games journalism on the corporate level, even though GamerGate was fixated on indie, which was silly, but on the corporate level was so corrupt it's unbelievable like we're talking like the journalists would all just be invited to like after parties where they would be handed all kinds of swag and then they would call they would literally hire strippers for these journalists for journalists who are going to be covering the game and this was just commonplace in the gaming industry until like the mid 2000s that was just commonplace it was very normal for that i have been to that type of after party that are thrown for uh for these types of events and um it, it it's again i i it's not just like zoomers being good at coming up with good swears or mean jokes it's not that it's that there is a culture from the very top of the industry to the bottom of complete dehumanization and and it and a disrespect for other people a an inability to do anything but focus on profit and the gaming and it and instead of and and this leads to so many issues it leads to the, the the rape culture it leads to the crunch culture all of these are derivative of the same thing and the people who are propagating this they're not zoomers these guys are people who've been around for a long time whether it's bobby kodak or whether it's yve yve guillermo or whether it's uh even mike morheim um, all of these these old studio big bigwigs have been around forever, and they built these structures. They put people into positions of power where they were the one. If you needed to report somebody for rape or for sexual assault, well, guess what? You either have to talk to the person who did it to you, or you have to talk to the person who put them in that position, and that person doesn't care because they've probably done it themselves. And what this does is it goes, it has a knock-on effect all the way down because what you have is if if you have a corporation that's making these games that doesn't give a fucking shit about rape happening in their building well then what makes you think that their community team is going to be given the tools necessary to get rid of rapey language or to get rid of um threats or harassment they're not it it comes from the top and i and i think that like if i was to say that like to propose a solution it would be these companies should be sued into the ground a activision blizzard ea Ubisoft, all of these companies that are having all of this stuff come out, they need to be investigated and sued into the ground. And if they go out of business, that's for the best. Start the games industry over with totally different people, with lessons that we learned from it. But it's not like you can't change when Bobby Kotick has uh, has made millions of dollars in settlements for sexual assault cases over the years. And he's the guy who calls all the shots. That's just that that's not fixable. That's that's root problems. Okay, we're gonna go to Agent next. Yeah, I, I think we need to ease off the black pill a little bit, right? I, I don't think gaming's rotten to the core. I don't think we have to destroy everything just to build it back up, right? There's plenty of good gaming companies who are designing games right now that are great, such as Bungie. Bungie's a huge franchise player with Destiny right now, and they used to make Halo. Destiny, the game, is one of the best-selling MMO 
FPS's looter shooters out there right now. They have an extremely progressive view on everything. Their community managers are always on top, and their reporting system is top notch. There is hope, right? I, you know, we're bringing up instances of 2008, 2012, of horrific fucking things. And gaming still now has a lot of fucking work to be done. But I think we are going in a better direction where, like, now maybe you don't need a whole village to go after for, you know, it's not a fighting game that I know, but like Smash Bros, which is like sort of like a pseudo fighting game. It's like, you don't need the village, you might need half a village. Now, is that too much? Yes, you shouldn't need half a village, but it's better than what it was, right? I also want to, you know, hit back on the zoomer slander a little bit it's like we, we didn't make this this has been around for a long long time we're just really good at insults yeah I'm, you just, just took gonna, it too I'm fucking far to holy my shit people. well <laughs> I, I mean but, the thing is i don't know man holy shit <laughs> I, I i appreciate <laughs> that there are some studios that do better than others but like activision blizzard is the biggest gaming company in the world by like a long shot. It is, shot. and heads should roll. Yeah, they should get and, and do you want to know what the you want to know what one of the other biggest ones is? I don't think it's to the core, though. It is, but sure. I mean that is the core. That's the core. Riot, Ubisoft, all of the biggest companies, the vast majority of gaming. What I'm saying is that the vast majority of gaming studios, the games that are being made, the most popular games in the world, all of the money are concentrated into firms that are rape factories. Um. And thank God they're getting their just desserts. Well, but they're not. Burn. They're not yet. We haven't even we haven't I even mean, begun. Seems like there's some type of wait, wait. Getting I I like I like the idea. They've seen no repercussions. Yeah, there's been no yeah. repercussions it's so far. Is not Blizz? Yeah, because this Blizz is, is getting just, sued, but like no repercussions. I and am Blizz Activision is getting sued out their ass by the California government. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That so sorry, there, there was a lot of people responding there. So agents is finished. Demon Mom was trying to respond to that, and then we'll throw it over to Joe. Then we gotta go to the list, but there's a Maddie and Cap. Riot Games is another massive studio that has had, uh, I mean, I can't even keep count of it anymore. And I can tell you this again: this is just one where, hey, sorry, this is a little anecdotal, but um, my best friend is a well, like a very, very experienced and well-connected um, uh, game de- game designer, and like there is so much more that hasn't even come out yet, and it might never come out. This one lawsuit, yes, it's a victory. Of course it is. But we don't even know if they're going to find a way to wiggle out of it. And most of the people involved are going to wiggle out of it. The people who, the company itself might not, might the company itself might even wiggle out of it. Um, the problem that we have is, again, I, I, it's not a matter of being blackpilled. The, the blackpilled, the blackpilled fact is just that, that gaming has been like this since it started. It, it's been corrupted from its beginning. It's been viewed as completely frivolous, and it, it's truly rotten. The biggest companies are all the ones that are having these issues. CD Projekt Red is another one. Massive, massive, highly critically acclaimed company having people have, it, like, they have to assign breakdown rooms because their culture is so bad. It's, it is, it is root. It is a root issue. It's not just, just a couple of companies. The, the exception, by a long shot, is a good studio and usually it's studios that are small enough that the employees actually have a say in what's going on um i i just i really think that people aren't taking this seriously once again because it's games it's video games and but but what we're talking about is uh for the people who work there it's not video games it's their job and they might be producing video games but what they do every single day is if you work at a place like blizzard and riot get sexually assaulted and sexually harassed on a daily basis. And it is that bad. Riot has had multiple lawsuits about this. There is more coming out. I know there is because they've already said this stuff is being litigated right now. Blizzard, this is a this is blowing the cap off at Blizzard, but people have been talking about this. I've known. I'm not even a, a game developer and I've known about this. The games industry, gamers need to recognize that the industry is completely fucked. And the sooner that people realize that, the sooner they take it seriously. Because we should be able to make games, but we can't do it while we're being choked out by, by again, rape factory companies like Activision Blizzard, the number one gaming company in the world, like Ubisoft, one of the top ten gaming sum- companies in the world, like Riot, owned by Tencent, the second biggest gaming company in the world, I believe. Um, yeah, that, that's the industry. There you have it. It is the root. Okay, now we're going to go to Maddie and then Kat. I'll be right back. I need to use the restroom. Up by first saying, Demon Mama, I watched... Oh, she's leaving. Well, I want to say I watched her um, coverage of Activision, Activision Blizzard and the amount of detail she went into um, researching it, and it was extremely well done. So I just wanted to commend her on that. I'll send her a DM since she's not in this chat right now. Um, but I also wanted to say, 
The locker room talk excuse for toxic behavior is just kind of weak. It is a little disappointing to hear victim blaming being used as an excuse for really shitty behavior. Um, you're, you can talk shit without being toxic or being a total asshole. Locker room talk isn't an excuse for sexism, racism, homophobia, um, for just like rage lashing out at someone. That's called having a temper tantrum. And maybe we should socialize that temper tantrums are unacceptable. Um, and what's also disappointing is seeing people explain those things away as just, oh, that's just, that's just gaming. That's just how it is. If you don't like it, you can leave. That's, again, just weak. It's blaming the victim for being uh, confronted with an onslaught of just really shitty and heinous things that they shouldn't have to put up with. You know, in high school, uh, believe it or not, I used to compete in StarCraft tournaments. I loved it. That was back in the day where you had to go to, like, a LAN party thing where they had actual storefronts where you go and play video games there um, together. And, and I used to compete, but I ended up um, not competing anymore because just especially as a woman like as soon as people find out that you're a woman you get confronted with just some really disgusting shit and I decided that I didn't want to deal with that anymore because also when I complained about it no one took it seriously that's proved a little bit um but if I were a gaming company I would take it a lot more seriously I think about all the people who maybe would otherwise be interested in playing video games and don't because they don't want to be harassed. They don't want to have to put up with that kind of treatment constantly just to play a game. If I were a gaming company, I would take this a hell of a lot more seriously if I look to expand my player base in the near future. Okay, now we're going to throw it over Back. to Colorado. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea of it being, like, just a gaming company, like, I don't give a fuck if they're manufacturing buttons. Like, if I go to work, I have the right to, like, go to work and go home and not want to, like, hang myself in my office on the way. Like, yep. true. your job is to go there, produce a product, or and maybe if you're passionate about it, love a product and go home. But, like, your job is not, like, supposed to be, like, trying to, like, dodge dicks out of your face all day. Like, that's not supposed to be your work environment. Hot take. Poggers! Huh? But it's not, like, okay, if that's the culture. That's really like, good to hear, Gatefish. It's Fish. not, like, oh, like, that really sucks. I guess maybe you're Gates. not strong enough. Like, I, I, I don't think anybody's supposed to be strong enough for, like, dodging, like, dicks all day. And, like, even, yeah. let's say, if I'm, like, just a player, um, it's not just, like, log off. I know, like, Aircraft, you were saying, like, just log off. Uh, but, it's like, not, no, that's so stupid. I paid fucking $70 for this dumbass game. I'm going to milk every goddamn cent out of it. Look, like, it, it just doesn't make any sense. There's, like, a thousands of people that didn't go to sleep for five weeks, so I could sit there and shoot somebody in the face, and I'm going to shoot real good. Like, that's my right to do. And, like, it... People, I shouldn't have to, like, sit there and be miserable to get the full, like, experience of my game. I should be able to sit there and be in, like, a generally hospitable environment. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting everybody to say, like, okay, honey, you're so good. Oh, you oh, you made us lose. We love you. That's not what I'm expecting. But I also don't think that, like, I should be able to take out a counter for him every time somebody calls me, like, hard R N word. Like, these are, it's not one or the other. Uh, we can have, like, just general civility. It doesn't really seem like it should be, like, that complicated. And it's nice, but yet unfortunate that it seems that, like, only indie um, development, um, like, houses are able to foster decent environments. Like, you know, um, places in which, like, a lot of the leadership are marginalized people seem to be a lot better overall. Of course they do. I mean, who would have thought? But also, like, it shouldn't have to... You, I shouldn't have to only be able to apply for, like, five places because or, otherwise it's going to be, like, women can't even code. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I've spoken to people that, like, uh, work at the uh, Ubisoft office and work on Assassin's Creed. They don't fucking like it. Like, just having a vagina, they just don't really fucking like it. But, yep. you know, they're going to sit there because they're passionate about something, but you can only be passionate beyond up to a certain extent. And then it's just, eventually the passion gets sucked out of you, and yep. then you just does. basically burn out. And, like, no one spends, like, four years to get a degree just to burn out in four years. It's just unfair. Okay. Next, we're going to throw it over to Aircraft. Uh, all, all right. Thank you so much. Look, great points, everyone. Hey, Demon Mama. 
you should get Space Marines, and we can commit exterminatus on the goblin population. We can have a blast with that. Uh, Black Templars for the win. Just saying. Um, hey, let's uh, let, let's separate first of all the professional environment from what? the gaming environment. Um, talking about look, uh, urban activism and everything. What's going on there? Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about it, but look, if you have sexual harassment going on, that is illegal. It should not exist. Uh, well, I think we can all agree with that. And uh, look, that is a that is an HR issue. That is a civil issue. It's things that are that are now showing up in courts. And uh, hopefully, all that gets resolved. When it comes to actually in the game, in the game lobbies and stuff, um, you have the choice to turn off the voice. You have a choice to just ignore it. I, I man, I hear some insanely toxic stuff online. Uh, even here on Twitch politics, and I just either ignore it or I go, huh, their opinion, move it on. Uh, but maybe that's just difference in, in the way I think. I've heard some foul stuff being in the military. One of the most toxic environments are is literally being in the military. Uh, you'll hear some of the most insanely disgusting things. And, uh, well, it's just the way of, I guess, learning how to thicken your skin. And I get it. Look, there's some people that are going to attack people based on immutable characteristics. I think that is, I think that's childish, stupid, and it shouldn't happen. Uh, it's not something that I engage in myself. I don't really use the N word. I don't pick on people for being this, that, or the other. I don't really care. Um, I will talk a little smack, but this is not unique to just video gaming. This is in. This is on the field. This is everywhere. This is part of life. Smack talk exists, and some people take it too far. But that, that's a maturity thing. That, that truly is. And I, I think we're making a, a bigger deal on the lobby side of it, not the actual professional side. And that's just the professional side. I think everyone's in full agreement. I think where the disagreement is, for the most part, would be in the gaming lobby. And look, this isn't only happening in the video game industry. This is, I mean, there's movies about this in Hollywood. So, of course, of course. I mean. Yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so um, we have a bunch of people on the list, and a lot of people want to respond to this. So, uh, Kevin is first in line, then Connor, then Joe, then Demon. Is there anybody who is particularly wants to respond to Aircraft Sparky as he just said it? It's fresh, so raise your hand if you want to respond to specifically what he just said. Okay, that's now another person added to the list. Okay, so I'm just going to go in order of when they raise their hand. Raise, raise your hand one more time. Sorry, I, I, was, I was writing another hand up. Okay, so... For those who want to respond to what Aircraft just said, specifically. Okay. Um, Joe, Demon, then Cat. So Joe's going to go, because he's the first on the list then. Sparky, are you trying to suggest that individuals need to just hand wave the the words that people say to them? I, I'm just saying that people take a little bit too much stock in the words people say towards them. Uh, people who don't know you, when they throw out an insult, if if you take it personally, that's a you problem. And you need to grow a little bit of skin. Sure. So Kyrie Irving gets called the N-word multiple times at Celtics home game. Should he have thicker skin? Or what's, what should be his procedure of fans well, ex saying the N-word multiple times in front what of him? Does, what does Kyrie Irving do in response? Does Does he burn down the stadium? Does he go and punch people in the face? No, he plays. Well, he gets those players, he gets those fans ejected. Well, and so, that's fine, too. That's fine, too. But you know what? At least they're doing it to his face. Most people hide behind a screen and sit there and go, oh, my God, this person is that, and everything else. And people get offended by that. Look, your pixel's on a screen to me. You, this we, take is fucking stupid. I gotta, I gotta stop you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. take is really, really stupid. So, like, I don't care. The, the, the problem... Yeah, you don't you don't care, but you're it's so you're okay with people taking certain types of actions when they're met with certain types of hate speech. But at the same time, you say grow thicker skin. So is it grow thicker mm. skin, or do you think that people should have the agency to be able to make sure people are held accountable of the world? Well, if Which reality are we living in? If, if they want to report people, they're they're free to do that. But here's the deal: a lot of times the mods in these in these lobbies. Don't act, can't no, act aren't. quick enough, can't actually go back and look at what is actually going on unless it's done in a text format. 
That's and a so dumb take. Can't actually enforce That's a dumb take. That's I can talk on this. Okay. I was going to talk on this. You know my, you know for a fact. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I haven't talked about this for a really long time. I sat here listening to the hyperbolicness of calling things rape factories, and now we have Sparky going on this weird hill of this dumb shit. So we'll talk about the rape factories in a second, but I'm going to go after Sharpie a bit, because this take is the stupidest fucking thing I've heard in a very long time on these panels. So there's, at some point, there's going to be some type of prescription that has to happen. You acknowledge that individuals should be able to have some type of repercussion for the words that they say. Simultaneously, you've, you've acknowledged in other discussions before that you don't really agree with these type of repercussions because things like racism and sexism are so arbitrary and they're hard to define and quantify in real life. So I'm trying to understand what your take is here because it's inconsistent with what you said in the past. So formally, do you think that people should be held accountable for the words that they say? When people say something to another person to, towards their face, okay, there there is going to be individual consequences for that. When they do it behind a screen and they sit there and they're not even showing their face like what you see in most game lobbies, there's a lot less opportunity for actual accountability to happen. What do I have to do? Nothing, because I don't, I sit there and go, words hurt? Okay, well, I mean, if that's the way you, you take it, go for it. But so you don't support, I don't freak so, out over I don't freak out over being I've been called all kinds of things. Yeah, cuz you're like because of your immutable characteristics, you're not going to fall victim to the type of hate speech that could happen to other people with immutable characteristics. Do you even know my immutable characteristics, bro? I mean, uh, oh my I, god. First, first the brain is an organ and now do you even know my immutable characteristics? Well, Holy no, shit. no, no, because <laughs> you know, the brain is an organ. I admit, yes, the brain is an organ. That's not a hot take. That's not even Yeah, and the curves aren't in Afghanistan. The curves aren't in Afghanistan. This is going to be a rough day. So What? It's a it's a callback to another panel. It's an old meme. Don't worry. It's an old meme. That's an old meme right there. That's an old meme right there. So 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 Sparky, I'm I'm trying really hard to to. You're do you understand that because of your immutable characteristics, certain words cannot be used in the same way that they could be used on say Demon Mama? Can you recognize that at the very least? I know that that um. Trans individuals have been treated in a specific way. In certain I'm words, not talking. I'm, uh, you, you I'm not loading it. I'm not loading it on the individual. I'm not loading. I'm not loading it on the identifiable things that they've said. I'm asking you directly, just by looking at Demon Mama, you can understand that their experience, based on their immutable characteristics, is going to be different. Don't don't try to play jujitsu on identifying the things and acknowledging the differences. Right? You acknowledge. I'm just going to just count it as acknowledgement. You acknowledge that to be true. Great. So. You understand that maybe Demon Mama is going to need certain protections that maybe the, you might use them from time and time again, but they might be have to be, unfortunately, explicitly designed for her. Do you understand that? Sure. Okay, so do you think that those things should exist in games, including extending to speech? No. I don't believe hate speech is a thing. I don't. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. so... Did I just yes, break there's, so a <laughs> there's a okay. difference between the First yeah, Amendment, you having the right, say, for example, to point. say, like, the N-word or something, versus actually having real-world consequences for it. So technically, you could go in a COD lobby and say all kinds of racial slurs. But if people recognize your voice and say, oh, yeah, that guy said a bunch of racial slurs and here's the proof, well, the question is, should people be held accountable for it? I actually agree with Joe Lewis on this. I get where Sparky's coming from in that you know, it's a vast world. It's a vast world. Hundreds of millions of gamers. How do you police all that? You can't. But you could say the same thing for crime. Uh, 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 where are the clearance rates for crime? Most crime that happens goes unpunished. That doesn't you mean you right. don't punish where it exists. You don't make an attempt to try to hold people accountable. I think report systems should definitely be bolstered. And I think the companies that ultimately refuse to... Mm -hmm adapt and enhance and bolster their reporting and moderating mechanisms, uh, perhaps they should face lawsuits, depending on the extent of the harassment and whatnot that occurs. But nobody's arguing you don't have the free speech to be like a racist bigot. The question well, is about I'm accountability. And I'm actually, uh, you actually got me agreeing with Joe a little bit right here. So fly, and we've fly, had a fly. lot of disagreements. Fly got a lot of this treatment, so. Thanks. So, so like, okay, okay, so, wait, so Sparky, wait, wait. I, I wanted to make sure other people got uh, yeah. talks. I just wanted to make sure. So, in the honor order, it is currently it's Connor, Demon, and Cat. But Connor didn't want to respond to anything Aircraft said. So, Connor, would you want to go after them or? 
what yeah, I'm sure. Like, like, listen, th- this is all we're we're painting in really broad strokes here. Like, what are we talking about? What should be the rule set for like a land party or a private lobby if everybody is on the same page? Well, for me, I don't give a fuck. If everybody's on the same page, they should be able to say whatever the fuck they want. Sure. When it comes to Thank a you, public uh, lobby or something like that, maybe there's just some words that are too hot for everybody to handle. So maybe we should just ban those ones. Either you can like. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have the cha- the ability to like auto detect voice, but they can auto detect uh, text at this point. Um, so maybe we can increase uh, reporting features for this. I, I think um, Kevin brought up a good point with like if there's a way in the next decade to report voice, then maybe that should be the 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 TOS, the terms of service in public lobbies. Maybe that needs to be updated so everybody's on the same page. I can talk about fucking your mom. I can't talk about your race. That's perfectly fine. I think that's acceptable. Um, and then when we're talking about uh, professional gamers, I think professional gamers, as in all professions, they need to be held to a higher standard, uh, whether that's the corporations that manufacture games or professionals who make money off of playing games. Those are the people that need to be held to a higher standard. They shouldn't win a tournament, walk off of stage, and they're just like, oh, well, I'm an aso- uh, asocial. Oh, man, almost went ableist. Um, I'm asocial as fuck, so I'm just going to grab this person's boob in front of uh, national television. No, that's not acceptable. You should be fined and basically kicked out of the the kicked out of the arena maybe banned suspended whatever so i think we're probably all on the same page if it seems like the right wing is a little bit more quiet at this point it's because you're basically boxing us into specifically defending slurs and shitty behavior it's kind of hard for me to be like oh yeah i think blah, 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 you should be able to say whatever you want like yeah maybe but you should suffer consequences too so it's a little hard to defend uh this one but it, my my problem connor is that I I can't let go of that take. That take was so weird. So the, we can acknowledge that there should be certain types of repercussions, but you got a person right next to you that mm-hmm. doesn't believe that hate speech exists. So Correct. what are we supposed to do with an individual who doesn't believe that hate speech exists? Tell him that in the pub, okay, in the private lobby, if he wants to jump on Discord, him and his friends can throw around whatever slurs and epithets and immutable characteristic insults that they want, including banging people's moms. And then if they're in a public mo- lobby, here's 10 words that you can't say because they offend certain classes of people. So regardless of whether or not you have some fucking right wing Dave Rubin fucking take on free speech and hate speech, it doesn't really matter. Because if you use these mm. 10 words, and let's use Halo Infinity coming out. If you use these in a Halo Infinity public lobby, you're getting fucking suspended. And if you do it three times, you get fucking banned. And that's just a TOS thing that the professional studios are going to have to do in order to protect their communities. Is that okay. something you agree with, Sparky? Look, if those are the rules, those are the rules. I just don't believe that hate speech exists. I just, I don't use specific words because... There's historical context, and well, personally, I'm just not that much of an asshole. But but then you acknowledge down, that certain words have a history. Yes, but, but I still don't say think that, hate but also simultaneously say well, this is a different is, subject. There's a difference between hate speech as like are those words hateful, and should maybe people have a different view of you if you use them versus should you go to prison over it? Right, that's the difference. So let's say you know you're caught. They got, you know, it's apparent, you know, there's evidence that you've uttered slurs and everything, and and, and people know who you are, and the anonymity, anonymity is removed. Well, it, it's not about asking, should you go to prison, you know, because in some countries you could it, very it, well. I believe in Germany. anything about anybody going oh. to prison for calling me an no, 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 When no, we're no, talking no, about no, hate no, speech, that's what we're talking hate about. Hate speech so, exists. The question hate, is, what do you hate, do about it? Hate okay, okay. Well, well, wait, 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 everybody, 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 okay? Uh, I want to make sure that we get the people on the list. I'm going to be Demon Mama, then Cat. Then we're going to hope for the rest of this conversation we can refrain from having to raise our hand and just keep it open. So, do Mama the Cat. Yeah, uh, so there's a couple of issues. First of all is that there has been an ongoing, uh, an ongoing, I'm talking years upon years upon years of complaints, both from professionals in the industry and enthusiasts outside of the industry, about the issues with moderation. Not only is text chat, like, under-moderated, um, forums are super under-moderated. Voice chat is obviously totally messed up. Now, it's funny because these gaming companies created uh, a way to capture the gameplay into a convenient file that you can download. Um, 
and they've developed all that technology, but they've never figured out a way to maybe, I don't know, have it so that if, a, if like three reports are made about a player, then it, then it will save a copy, a compressed copy of the vote, the voice file from that, uh, that, that in-game session. I don't know. It feels to me like there's probably solutions there, but as we've seen, and this has been a problem even here on Twitch, by the way, notice how much genuine controversy first verse has come up over moderation on Twitch. Most of us here know how hard it is to moderate on Twitch. It's very difficult. This is the same pro Twitch is a gaming website pr primarily. Obviously, we're doing politics on it. So that's a thing. There just hasn't been the um, willingness to engage in developing solutions to this. And I point to what I was saying before, which is that from the top, a lot of these companies all the way down just don't care. The people who are in the positions to make the decisions don't want that to happen because that makes it worse for them. They don't get to keep vic victimizing people. And there was something I wanted to respond to Aircraft Sparky earlier by saying, oh, well, if it happens in the workplace, well, that's the position of HR and whatever, whatever. HR has been routinely involved in this. In fact, th what happened yesterday after the Bill Cosby suite uh, Activision Blizzard photos came out, it was discovered that one of the HR people was one of the people who hung out in the Cosby suite. So it's it goes beyond being an HR problem. This is a, a like nearly every division of every single one of these companies has had controversy, uh, has had not just controversy, has had victimization after victimization after victimization. They are structurally installed in a lot of these companies. There are literal pipelines um of people who cover for other people with just the, again if we're just going to talk about the activision blizzard one which is the one in everyone's minds well the alex afrasiabi had numerous severe sexual harassment complaints about him it has been documented and also there's there's argue i think there's video that exists out there we're going to find out for sure of other of male employees pulling afrasiabi off of uh women employees because he was that pushy and that forceful and yet, when it came to the table of the president, J. Allen Brack, he gave him verbal counseling, and then he kept working there for years, for years, for years. This is what would happen. Every time a complaint came in, he would get verbal counseling, and then he would continue being there until eventually they caught wind of this uh, upcoming uh, uh, lawsuit, and then they finally got rid of him very quietly, didn't even announce it. So I, I think that there's a... I, I really want to encourage people on this panel to not downplay these issues. And I do think that they bleed into the culture. I think the reason why we do, we haven't seen action on voice chats and text chats improving and there's so much hate speech in there is because the people who are in charge just don't prioritize that. They don't care. They don't want to put the money into investing the tools that would protect member the, the people of their community that need to. And to just do one final thing to touch on all the issues that were discussed, to discuss the issue of what of the free speech issue, this is ridiculous. If you believe that somebody can be thrown out of a, ba a basketball game because of saying the N-word, then it, it should be even easier decision to decide to ban someone or suspend someone's account because of using this language. We just have to figure out how to monitor it. Yeah, but Dima Mama, you can also recognize, though, um, so I do agree with you that there is the question of what is considered public conversation. I think video games are slowly but progressively dealing with that question in different spaces, right? Mm -hmm. Like nothing's stopping me from uploading a clip of my audio one for one as I hear it in a broadcast, but certain sites like really within the sharing of the algorithm itself or the sharing of the content, they'll be like, because of privacy concerns, party chat or public chat is muted for this. So even though you'll have somebody just like screaming expletives, even if you try to like PS share that, so like this person saying the n-word all this crazy other stuff and this has to stop it doesn't necessarily get caught however well but that's a policy like, decision isn't it like that's an internal dis decision there's nothing there's nothing necessarily legal um as long as they at least as far as i understand it unless there's some sort of antiquated recording law but as far as i understand it it's just that they're that they haven't because they don't want to have the the uh responsibility of having to moderate the voice channels they just put a disclaimer that says yeah what you hear in voice uh we don't care it's none of our business so voice is just well, me messy sure but i would imagine there, there has to be some I, again i don't know but i know there's different type i mean we did the whole destiny arc of him recording chats right so we understand that there's like certain privacy exceptions in different things in terms of a discord call so we do acknowledge like there's something that exists but something within games there's like a piece 
either that developer again i i'm giving them a lot of charitability yeah i agree like, there's a piece that there's a piece that maybe they're not willing to approach to take the risk where i would argue take the risk and fight it in court especially because well, then I think maybe but i think also that. that they could uh, and, oh, and again i'm not a lawyer but i do feel like it would be possible for games companies to just say hey um like i mean this happens when you um when you get a call from a company uh like this this call may be report recorded for customer service and training purposes just put that in all of your uh use end user licensing agreements people should treat the in-game voice it in-game voice is not a private phone call um you shouting in a studio in a in a stadium that is being recorded and going on local television isn't the same as being in a phone call obviously i tend to agree with sure. uh with like obviously if you're have if you're on a private call with your um with your discord people sure but in game voice shouldn't be considered some sort of private space because it isn't people get slotted in sometimes they don't even have a choice in it because the matchmaking just puts you in a match with people i've been put in matches with people that i've used the tools that they give you to avoid players and you get put back in i've blocked people and they still get put back in with you it's just like i don't know it what what i see is that this has been an issue for for since the inception of online gaming and gaming companies drag their feet like crazy um unless people go really hard on them and demand it as a feature yeah can, okay can, wait wait one moment i wanted to make sure cat got time to speak uh because cat's the only person from the list who i think hasn't gotten time to speak yet cool uh i have a couple of things uh first one uh aircraft in the future it might be in your best interest to not use the word i don't really use the end word just yeah try that out sometime uh, try using I don't use it. That is cool. Um, okay, so then um, another thing was is uh, we were talking about the um, yeah. So if you don't like it, don't <laughs> be on there. Uh, so it, there's technology out on like some of the most like, basic things that we use that are able to transcribe our words. If we're able to have technology out there that can just transcribe our words for like Discord, then the same thing could be done for all of these different games. The reason why it hasn't been done is because no one actually gives a fuck. Discord makes sure that people aren't having Nazi servers, but they don't make sure that they don't have servers where people are being sexually harassed. Why? Wait, wait, I just watched hours of Politically Provoked. I don't necessarily think that's the case anymore. I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, okay. my TV does have um, MSNBC burned into it, so maybe there's something there. But, um, okay. I, but I think, would you extend that, though, like the same type of restrictions for Discord, though? That, like, public Discord should also be recorded in type of way to... For punishable behavior well there are like servers God out damn. there there are servers out there that are like community not like my you no know, me and the boys server but like there's servers that have like thousands of people for example there's like the discord study server and like just random people can join it uh i think those should have the type of software put in so that like if i decide to study with somebody and someone's like i want to study with blacks they should oh uh, yes the doobie anymore. rule i agree <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or like, yeah, if there's like um, um, a server like run by like a company for the game Destiny, there should be things in there to stop, uh, you know, people being like, I don't know, get out, you fucking da da da. And there's no like thick skin. Like, I don't know, what? <laughs> I, there's like, sure, there's, there's, there is thick skin. If Dylan calls me up and says, hey, friend, I just wanted to let you know that your content's not that good and maybe you should work on it, then I'd be like, hmm, that kind of hurt my feeling, but I can have thick skin. But there's not really like a. I should really just. I'm try glad you realized yelling. that, by the way. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I will poison kidding, your yeah. food. Um, and then um, yeah. There's also you know the like, hey, a uh, person that I'm playing a game with, you fucking you know uh you know uh what do you call it roasty theme hail, piece uh, of hail shit and word blah blah blah. Yeah, it's not really like something I should ever learn to get better with. You know, like it's not really like get thick skin it's also not like have you tried turning off uh you know voice chat chat because if i'm playing like a team game i kind of need to hear uh what's happening if i want to cover you properly so like no it's not like just don't play multiplayer no i pay i pay 75 fucking dollars and i'm gonna get every goddamn cent out of it and like that's my right to not waste my money okay. and that's everyone's right to not waste their money please for the love of god may i please go I, I said I was uh, ditching the hand raising, like just okay. I'm I'm restless. gonna go. I'm gonna go because the the reason why I'm gonna go is because holy fuck is the path to hell paved with good intentions. And what I just heard in the past three minutes was, hey, 
Uh, should every conversation from every video game be auto transcribed and reported to the fucking uh, reported to the fucking business? Should every conversation on Discord be auto transcribed and monitored by Discord? No, the answer is no. But it is. What the fuck? Like, Wait, but you, it is. Like, uh, oh my god! Like, you could reconstitute. Like, you're the best fucking pawns of the secret police are in this fucking room right now. Holy shit! Secret police. This is Yes! Holy shit! Wait, okay. secret police? Well, your your social media is already being monitored, though. Kevin. Yeah, no shit! So I don't want to make it worse! God damn! Okay, wait, so, wait. so basically, here's the fucking problem. No, 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 no. You guys give me a <laughs> brain aneurysm for fucking fun. This is mine. This is mine. No, it's not hysterical. And the reason why it's not hysterical is because there was an Israeli-based company that literally just got caught selling fucking spyware to international companies and fucking literally drug cartels who assassinated fucking journalists worldwide. You want to give private corporations the ability to fucking monitor voice chats, auto-transcribe the fucking conversations, and then give that, sell that to other people? Are you fucking insane? Like the whole, you, you're basically like, hey, let's create blackmail, give it to private corporations, and then see okay, whether or not they what, smell what, it. What, what secret am I supposed to be, ha be giving in like a study discord? Like in <laughs> oh, okay, just don't do anything server. wrong. Wait a second. That's the, that's no, the no, approach no, no, that no, we're taking. Like, you I'm have not nothing to hide, so don't do anything wrong. Wait, 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 order possible cat <laughs> could you could you uh say what you were saying i'm sorry I didn't yeah, yeah. Please. So i'm not saying that they should transcribe like me talking to the boys in my five uh person discord server but i'm saying mm -hmm. in my community servers and there's thousands of people should, what what fucking military secrets are you supposed to be or like secrets oh. of any sort are you giving inside <laughs> of your discord like if i'm inside of my study group and people what what was i saying to anybody in my study group discord of like the thousand people one that's uh like public like that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like, you and your friends. I'm talking about, like, the Destiny sure. official Discord server or the Minecraft official Discord server. Okay, I, like, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I love the if you have nothing to hide. Yeah, I love no, it, I love it, if you have nothing to hide, then don't worry about it. It's not a matter. That's that's, that's that, I feel like that's a bad faith oh, engagement. It's it's absolutely absolutely can I explain? Because someone's analogy. calling me slurs on a server. Can I, like, can I explain why I, I think? Highly Holy shit. I feel like this is the wild guy. Hold the fuck up. Okay, okay, okay. You guys are I am in that. Nope. Why is he getting so mad? Guys, I just want to remind everybody that the fighting at the end of the day is pointless because koala bears exist and they're kind of cute anyway just so give that a moment for you all to calm down okay this has been and giraffes exist they're cool too giraffes are pretty cool anyway raise your hand if you want to talk okay i uh want to throw it to Team Mama. Thank you. So, there are a couple of there are a couple of things that I think are I feel like this is getting maybe a little bit um, out of step with what's actually being proposed. So, first of all, with regard to video games, um, somebody's groaning very loudly, but um, but Sorry. yeah, uh, <laughs> with regard to video games, like first of all, all of your text communications in video games are already saved especially in games like League of Legends, where videos of your gameplay and your in-game text chat are, are already saved and kept on servers. Um, so this is, a, this is a rampant problem all over the place. Um, I think that you have the least to worry about your in-game public voice chats being data harvested when literally your personal information is plugged into every single game that you, that you play often literally given to them by the store that you play through. So you buy a multiplayer game on Steam and your info ends up being given to them via a bunch of contracts that you didn't even know that you signed. So this is just like, you're, you're not engaging with the question. The problem that we have with something like the Patriot Act is because it allows for the monitoring of private calls uh, that you can't even oversee and the maintenance of that. I think that we could use something like a GDPR for the US that would handle how long companies can hold data. But we're not talking about like mass recording or anything like that. I'm saying there's perhaps an application for, hey, if a game's voice chat gets four, four reports that somebody is saying that they want to like kill somebody else and they're freaking out and screaming in the voice chat, then that would prompt the server to automatically create a temporary customer service um, copy that they can listen to. That's all that we're talking about here. I really don't think that this is like 
a matter of public security. We're talking about a company within their own product on their own um, website in the, in the voice chats that they already maintain. Obviously, I believe that private phone calls should be encrypted and kept safe and private. But a video game lobby is, by definition, not a private space. And uh, there's all kinds of things that allow you to be recorded in public already. So I just I feel like you're kind of flying off the handle at Katarana, and there, and it's not really you're not actually engaging with what the what the what the situation that she's proposed is. Um, yeah, that's my main Since thing here. Can, can I, can I, I respond? Um, I will. Uh, I will let you respond, but then we gotta throw it to Agent because Agent hasn't talked in a while. Okay. So the system that Demon Mama has just proposed is perfect. Okay. It's it's the equivalent of having a fly swatter to take out flies and mosquitoes versus a fuel air bomb. I don't want auto transcription, but I think that especially when it comes to voice, four reports, three three reports even. Hey, this person is using the N word. Well, after the third report, it records you know basically the next hour of that person's interaction. If they're found to be using slurs, then they get a suspension or a ban. I think that's fucking genius. I think it's perfect. We agree. Now here's the more important part. Koala bears suck. All right. They evolved to eat a single plant that makes them lethargic during the day. So we're going to throw it over to Agent. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm going to fight back against this idea that, you know, chat and moderation hasn't been getting better whatsoever. This is the horror stories of 08 that, you know, Demon Mama mentioned, or, or 2012, like someone else mentioned. Like, you know, 08 was a pretty long time ago. I was like seven. I, I'm pretty old now compared to that. You it's not way sword. better. You can say shit on League of Legends that you can't, like, you could say shit two years ago and not get banned that, like, even today, you'd be gone. Even in text chat, in League of Legends, which is insanely toxic, it is getting better. Now, moderation in, on voice chats, like the way you posed it, you know, with a lot of caveats and, like, they can't hold the data, it's only after recording, that's fine by me. I, I just don't like this whole <clears throat> idea of mass recording, especially voice chats and, like, even logistically how that'd work. Like, you know, is it my mic on at all times? Do I have to opt in? Is it only when I speak on a push talk? Is it on always? It's, it really is a slippery slope there. I would agree with the way you posed it. I do like it. I'm just going to push back on games having gotten better because they have. Even in these super large uh, corporations, even in games like Overwatch, which is owned by Blizzard Activision, which are full of scumbags, has gotten better. So I do have hope there. I mean, the I thing is, like, the stories I agree with you. Oh, okay, go ahead. You know, it's like to agree with you a little bit, Agent, and maybe this is something that Connor too that you can respond to, is that I think there there has to be how do I say this in, in the nicest way possible? I don't trust humans with anything. So one of the things that I think these companies need to do is get professionals in here who understand how the language looks, how the language sounds, and how the language evolves over time. Like we see this a lot, um, <laughs> Brittany, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brittany. You're still the best. You're still one of the top three mods on Twitch, but I'm going to drag you a little bit. So have, have fun. Maybe Todd will defend you, whatever the fuck his name is. So I think that sometimes people will use their bias to justify not understanding the language that people use. As an example, maybe a groiper won't overtly say something incredibly sexist or transphobic, but they'll maybe skirt the line just enough where the layman person would be like, well, that's not really what they're saying. When in reality, if you put a professional in that space, they'll go, that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying this, there's no trying to hide this because I study this, this language and what this language looks like. Because I do think in the chat situations, you can, you can have certain banned words and banned terms, but the problem is people do, as we learned with um, our good old boy uh, Charm Hole, that they skirt the terms in such a way where you you have to have a little bit more of a brain to understand what's being implied there. So like, oh, I'm not saying the N word. I'm just saying try hard. Like, oh, this this cr this pesky try hard. And it's like we know that you're we know what you're doing here. And then it's like, and then they'll do that. What's well, not what I'm saying? You're just inferring that. And so my point here is is that I think. These companies, at the very least, need to get people in these spaces to understand what this language looks like in a 2021 landscape. Because you can't just 
for for instance, just make a bunch of band terms for the N word and all the adjacents of that, or like different variations and different spellings. Sometimes you have to use certain words, unfortunately, that on its face you'd be like, "Oh, this is totally harmless," but in reality, it it is used to perpetuate hate, sexism, and stuff like that. And to be honest, like I don't I'm trust these confused. companies to to make a good use of the term that they should ban or trim. You know what? We should never ban any words ever because someone's just going to find a way to get around it. So you know, ah, uh, the doobie rule. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I just don't really feel like that's a really great argument. Like, oh, someone will just charm hole will get around it. Well, I'd rather charm hole get Wait, around. Wait, you don't. It. You I'm don't listening. agree that I'm listening you're as hard ban. as I can. Wait, I'm just, you don't agree words? that? Are you? I feel like we're just. Yeah, what's next? The pronouns Wait. first they came for the r slur and i didn't I know say you're not i know you're not you can't i know you can't be memeing me here because like we understand that professionals need to be certain professionals outside of different fields need to be in these spaces to help educate these groups hey about get some rest like sexism and racism and stuff rest, like rest that. So i don't think you believe that though. no i just think that like i'd rather there be like okay every once in a while a charm hole gets through rather than having like the entire like dork squad and nick fuentes in my fucking chat you feel like listen don't wait, wait, so, so, like so again because you dodged it so let's try again do you mm-hmm. agree that you need certain professionals outside of your field to understand things like racism and sexism not entirely um... like can, what do you mean okay let's say dylan is a professional in microaggressions okay and then he comes into the space to educate the staff about how microaggressions manifest themselves in language, how to spot it in chat for moderation. Is that something that you would support? Would you support a professional like Dylan to yeah, educate like, the, the employee base of Blizzard about, about something like that? Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem Okay, with that. great. Oh, by the way, my, my, <laughs> my, uh, my training platform for um, how not to do that would just be all of Redneck's tweets with, with the cover saying, don't do this. That yeah, would basically true. Be it. yeah, true. LTS. Yeah. I see that you're in a lover's quarrel. I'll let you get back to it. I mean, I'm tr- I mean, Dylan's trying to get on that troll page. I'm, I'm a I little mean, lost. The, I, I, that's the badge of honor. No, no, no. I was the first one. I tried you to buy were? it. It didn't work out. Yeah, I, oh, wow, he is, I'm actually the only NFT he has sold that somebody's made a bid on. Mm. <laughs> so, who, who bid on that? Show yourself in chat. <laughs> Dylan, try to tell us something here. Did you buy your own? What is going on? Is this a panel not still? Buy my What's own happening? NFT. Did I, don't did even I just know fall into a different panel? Would it be Bitcoin? I I don't know. Ooh, uh, okay. he uses an offshoot of Ethereum. Uh, <laughs> good to know. Jesus um, Christ. Yeah. So so basically, on the point about you know uh, corporations and whatnot, I, I think it is important here on the on the issue of toxicity, of course, to distinguish between at the corporate level uh, game creation and the workplace culture that's there. And obviously we've seen, you know, uh, Dima Mama brought to light earlier in the stream uh, some egregious examples of uh, poor behavior at the corporate level versus the toxicity in the actual gamer space uh, from the player base. And I think that there's more or less two different routes to go about uh, making it better uh, at the corporate level and then at the player base level. I think that at the corporate level, At the end of the day, it's going to take lawsuits. It's going to take these uh, coming to light to really uh, basically bring down a bunch of uh, backwater holdovers of, uh, you know, a bygone and pretty bad era. And it doesn't necessarily mean you just destroy gamer culture and rebuild it. It's it's going to be a transitional phase, but you have to weed out some really toxic corporate culture. And if it means that they go bankrupt, then good, then good. Then you get some new companies, new ingenuity in there uh, where they aren't a, a, an absolute shit show when it comes to, uh, you know, promoting great culture and that kind of thing. At the player base level, I do think that removing anonymity, though, will go a long way towards making people uh, at least worry that if, if they were going to behave in a in a very racist or misogynist direction, that maybe there might be a slight chance that they're held accountable. I think that that will go a long way towards uh, basically creating a more wholesome and, and, and proper culture where, you, yeah, you can shit talk and everything, but if you're going to go and use, you know, the type of stuff that Nick Fuentes talks about, Nazbol Nick, the nose picker in chief, you want to go with the stuff that he talks about, then yeah, maybe your name does come out. Who knows? But I do think at the end of the day, uh, anonymity, uh, you don't even necessarily have to get rid of that in its entirety, but that 
but that you need to have a culture in which people definitely feel that well i'm not 100 percent anonymous online there's still a chance that my words could uh come back to bite me if i'm gonna be a racist prick or whatnot and and and, and to say oh well i don't believe in hate speech and this sort of thing no hate speech exists the question is do you believe that it should be criminal or not i don't think i, I think we can all agree you don't have a right to say the n-word in a call of duty lobby and if cod gets serious about making it so that you, you you'll face repercussions if you do well as a company I, i'd advise that they'd be better off to do that because then they'll have a bigger customer base of people that feel comfortable to participate in their game so that's yeah, my view i, I, yeah, I actually so, i mostly so, agree wait, with wait, wait wait we have to wrap this up or we're gonna have to skip the last topic so we have can to i respond here and make it my closing yeah of course Chat, I just want to say that the Kevin you see is not the Kevin that is, is representative of the actual spice that exists here. You might think that Kevin is a dirty lefty, but deep down there's some wings in there, and I hope for one panel you get to see them fly because they're incredible. That's all. Oh, I'm a hawk. They're hawk wings. They're hawk wings, man. Space Chad Hawk. And he wants to liberate North Korea and Iran. And see? Afghanistan, see? Afghanistan. I'm telling you, chat. And Bellator. Bring- Hashtag bring Kevin back every week, okay? Let's make it happen. Yeah, no, let's make it happen. It. Let's let's go. Let's make okay. Kevin fly. We're gonna throw it over to Agent Ten to wrap it up with his ending statement. Yeah, so uh fuck Activision Blizzard, right? We all agree on that. Uh, we did have a lot of agreement on this subject, thankfully. Um I, I just don't think that gaming culture in itself is fucked. I don't think we need to burn it down and rebuild it. I'm not that black pilled yet. I don't think any of us be black that black pilled yet. We've gone Huge improvements in the industry and on the gaming level in itself. Moderation has gotten better on all games, especially AAA studio games. Even the toxic cesspool is League of Legends has been fixed up. Now, mm. recording voice chats, I'm very iffy. I'm going to need to see a really good plan on it, or I'm not going to agree with it. But No nuts, he believes in nuking North Korea. All across he literally does. In general, he actually does. getting better at this. And on a corporate level, with all this little scandal going on, clean house. Build it, build the house back up with people who aren't scumbags. That's my take on it. Okay. Next, we're gonna throw it over to Aircraft. Yeah. Um. Corporate side. Uh. Hopefully, all these uh all these nice little uh, civil actions will will we'll clean up clean up the industry side when it comes to uh, voice chat and uh, text chat and everything. If the companies want to moderate it, I mean, that's going to be their choice. This isn't a, a free speech thing, but I don't believe there's things such as uh, hate speech. It's just my opinion. It's okay. Uh, Katarina said I shouldn't say, well, I, I don't always use this word. Well, I mean, I do listen to rap, and, you know, you can't sing Gold Digger without saying certain words. Just saying. But it's it's the dumbest thing ever. But when it comes down to it, <laughs> when it comes down to it, man, you you, you got to realize that the people are going to be assholes, um, and well, a little okay. apathy can go a long way when it comes to how people talk about you. Uh, don't take yourself so serious, and maybe your life will get better. Um, if everything's personal, then, man, you're going to be miserable, and people yeah, will I laugh agree with at you. that. Actual I'm just saying. Trash. Yeah. I'm going to throw it over to uh, Connor points. All right. Um, so there's this YouTube channel called Hood Nature. It's one of my favorite channels on YouTube. And they discuss why the koala is an evolutionary mistake and a piece of shit. Yield. Connor has yielded his intro for the next topic. I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah. Um... I, I, I'm I glad that most people here were able to largely agree on, on the core. Uh, the industry is destroying a lot of people that I care about. Um, I fucking love video games. And uh, sometimes you realize that uh, a controlled burn is incredibly important to, to uh, save what you love. Um, lest the entire plague uh, consume the entire industry forever. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's much of a chance. I think we live uh, in a time where uh, corporations can essentially get away with anything they want, and the people in the highest positions of power, people like Bobby Kotick, one of the richest people in the world, who is also 
notably in Epstein's flight logs, um, are going to continue doing this. And the reason why I say that things like, I will say things like, we need to burn it down, which is echoed by people like James Stephanie Sterling, um, is because uh, they are never going to act out of their own interest. Bobby Kotick is one of the people who has offended this and uh, who has offended uh, on these levels and has also uh, enabled this. And he's the top of the company. These are the highest positions, the people with the most say. And uh, if that means we have to lose companies like Blizzard, Activision, Ubisoft, I I'm actually surprised that I agree with Kevin so much here because I do think that actually it will create a lot of fertile ground for a new style, a new world of gaming that is just so much better than what we have. Because I can tell you right now, it's not very good for a lot of us. It's pretty bad for a lot of us. Now, maybe some people have a good time with whatever games that they want, but the reality is that most of the gaming world is a world of uh, blistering crunch, of horrible treatment, of sexual assault, and of uh, gambling mechanics made to literally manipulate children. The gaming industry is in a very sp bad spot right now, and I think that we need to take it seriously. Uh, games are really important. I think they're really valuable, and I think we should take it really seriously. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Uh, yeah, I'm, again, l listen, hashtag let Kevin fly, okay? I hope that happens. Yeah, let's make it trend. Make it trend. Are you? Okay. Katarana? Hey, Aircraft Sparky, can you sing Gold Digger for me? Just kidding. Uh, please never don't. This, the, you know what? You get that song in your Spotify? Delete it. Okay, there's my... There. Yeah. Got it. It's a weird it over panel. It's a very weird panel. So, the reason that the industry matters, or the reason why... Um, the same sort of like sexism, homophobia, racism that happens at the company level, it absolutely influences gamer culture because those are the people creating the games. Those are the people determining whether or not certain behavior is acceptable or not in the games. So I think absolutely if we want to address toxic gamer culture, it starts by addressing the toxic behavior that has been allowed to run rampant within that industry and activism activision blizzard is simply one egregious example of that um and just you can sing songs that, without saying the n-word it's it's real easy um and i will not uh tolerate this koala slander anymore they are cute there's value in being cute how the hell do you think i got to where i am i yield my time Throwing it over to Kevin Castley. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Want to start off by saying, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think uh, koalas are cute. They're also baits. Let's just be real about that. Uh, I like hmm. koalas. Uh, let's get into the closing remarks here. So, uh, is it all toxic in uh, you know the player base and whatnot? No, it varies by game, at least in my experience. And I'll say straight up, you know, I'm a straight white dude, so my experience is obviously going to be filtered and biased. And I think that. You know, Dima Mama and others on the panel who have discussed this, uh, their points, obviously, you sh should take that and say, well, you know, they, hey, thanks, they buddy. Uh, had a different Appreciate experience that. there, and uh, their experience is also worth noting here in terms of discussing the toxicity yeah, that's there. And I think that, as I've said, we're going to have to go about this, not necessarily through some huge government mandate where it's like, oh, you... You, you got to do this. You got to do that. No, I think lawsuits are going to be a great way to bring down yeah, I a don't ton of dinosaurs, a ton of uh, trash bin, uh, rape culture dinosaurs at the corporate level. And I think at the player base level, it, inculcating a culture where you're not anonymous, where you know you're not necessarily anonymous, that can go that can go worlds. But additionally, uh, just uh, as time goes on, and again, this is from my own personal experience, I've seen people become less toxic in, in, in games and stuff than versus when i played games in 2010 but again that's my own personal anecdote there yeah, i want to close just by saying though that i think on the point about recording and the point about enabling companies to do a better job of moderation through the use of tech and through the use of data storage we need to understand that well look data storage is already a thing if you use facebook you use twitter yeah. you use instagram you use any of these various social media platforms your data is being held at the proprietary level 
where these companies can choose to use that. They even uh, sell to advertisers, for example. That was something that came out with Facebook. It is something where I think that at the end of the day, taking more measures to enable uh, you know, moderators to have more information at the reporting level to make a determination on, say, somebody's status, if they should be banned or not. And I think that that's this going to Richard, create a better uh, culture is, um... in the long run because, again, it, it increases accountability. And I will say this just to wrap up. I Why think can't it I think of his name? I'm a blanking. A little bit of a double standard, though, where some of us here are willing to Kevin say, yes, that's Kevin Castley. Kevin or that's something that we can get behind. Kevin Castley. But then on the Patriot Act, oh, no, that's bad. We can't use that to fight terrorism. I'm a supporter of the Patriot Act, and I'll say this. I'll debate anybody who's an opponent. I do debate nights all the time. You're welcome to debate me. At oh, Kevin Castley oh. on Twitter, shoot me a DM, and we'll work something out. Thank you. No longer $200 per debate. I'm happy. I'm happy the debate <laughs> price has fallen. Okay. <laughs> We're no, now going. It's free. To... it's free. No, it's free. Wonderful. You have to buy one Dylan Burns NFT. We're going to go into <laughs> the last topic of the night, which is. Holy shit, did I forget it? Porn. I'm blanking right pornography. now. Pornography. Yes. It's... Yes. Uh, Kevin was very excited for this one, obviously. <laughs> um, we have a lot of pornography experts here, so uh, thankfully we're going to have some finally some expertise on this topic. A lot go. of pornography experts here, a lot of connoisseurs. So. Uh, pornography, is it harmful? Is it something that is fine to be consumed? Is the industry as a whole harmful? And uh, should anything this. be done about it? The issue of pornography. Uh, it's a pretty broad topic, and that you're free to take it broad. anywhere you want to. We're going to start in the top of the left-hand corner with Agent 10. So, is it harmful? Yeah. Um, mentally, yeah, it's pretty addictive. Um, does it mean you should be banned or anything like that? No, I think cigarettes should not be banned either. They're fucking harmful. Um, as someone who indulges, you know, I, I enjoy I enjoy the art, right? Um, I think we should limit it, obviously, to you know younger audiences. Uh, keep like laws for like advertising certain content as you know it is now. I don't think that's harmful. Um, if we're gonna steer this in more of is it harmful and like the workers are affected? Um, hell yeah, have porn stars be union because uh, I've I've heard some horror stories there. But yes. overall, do we think porn is harmful? I mean, technically, yes, but I think so far the um, regulations as we have it now and what we can do is in a uh, is in a good spot. Hmm. Okay, next is going to be aircraft sparking. Yes, porn porn can be harmful to both those who consume it and those who act in it. Uh, there are several stories that came down from uh, from reformed porn porn uh, actresses and actors. Uh, talk about what bad that happens in the in the porn community. However, I don't think that it should be banned at all. I, I people should be free to choose whatever they consume. Uh, the only place that it should be limited is, of course, who can who can consume it. Uh, unlike uh, Flora Gill, who said someone uh, needs to create porn for children, um, and then she went on her little ridiculous thing, and that was a little too spicy. Uh, Porn for children, no. Porn with children, no. No, uh, there should be there should be stop gaps to to end the free uh, consuming of porn. Uh, I think uh, places like Pornhub should have a certain type of verification to verify your age, uh, pro- possibly to pay. Because think of all the work of all these hardworking sex workers that are losing that sweet sweet Skrilla by all those free clicks. So look, if you want to support actual sex workers. We need to push for monetization of porn. We need a paywall on all porn sites. And look, too simple. It is harmful. It no, can't be addictive, but no, true. it shouldn't go anywhere. Um, Next, we're going to throw it over to Connor. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, so I think, yes, I, I agree with Agent 10 100%. I think it is harmful. I think it's probably like drinking alcohol, smoking uh, tobacco. It's something that can be done in moderation, but if you do it too intensely, then obviously you can fuck your shit up. When it comes to actually regulating the industry itself, I know that there's already like pretty strict health regulations. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, since we talked about the brain uh, being a vital organ, uh, maybe we should talk about mental health in the porn industry and uh, just make sure that consenting adults are truly consenting adults. Make sure that they're making the right decisions at the right time. Uh, we can discuss how that makes sense or what makes sense while respecting the, ro- uh, the rules of the auto- or the autonomy of the individual. Um, but also I have a communitarian stance on this, which is basically like, what should be the age of actors? 
can we do a utilitarian study for the society to you know basically come up with a rule for what that age should be? That's what the age should be. Um, so basically, uh, I'll leave it there. Okay. Next is going to be Demon Mama. Um, okay, so is porn harmful? I think that's a very silly question. Uh, no, obviously it is not, uh, not wholly harmful. Can it, can there be situations where porn can be harmful to people? Obviously, but that is true about literally everything, um, in the entire world. Um, porn is a enormous industry. Uh, porn is an, an, uh, like, I don't know. It's so broad. I can't believe that people are coming out here saying like porn is harmful. Like that's that's ridiculous to me. Porn does a lot of good things, and of course that's not to say that like the porn industry is good. I mean, most of the porn industry is um is tube sites that steal shit from other people, and that is really fucked. I don't think that you solve that by paywalling anything, um, because the paywalls just end up going into the pockets of the corporation. In fact, I think the best way to do that is to support sex workers and porn stars directly. In fact, if you want to free them, that's probably the best way to do it. Cool thing. On Twitter, a lot of, a lot of uh, porn performers, uh, amateur and otherwise, give you ways to support them directly. You should do it. Send them some money on their PayPal. Send them some money on their uh, what, many vids or whatever other websites that they have. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. but um, the uh, Oh, yeah, it's that one. I can't say the other one. Um, so, yeah. Uh, no, porn is not harmful uh like i don't i think that's really ridiculous to make that claim um i think there are circumstances in which it can be harmful obviously people can become addicted to all kinds of things let's talk about league of legends if we want to talk about things that can addict you um but uh but yeah obviously people can get addicted to it but that's like it's not the idea that like porn is like uniquely harmful or bad is is very silly um, and also I know that probably this is going to come up at some point, which is, um, like body, uh, issues and, and, and unhealthy ways. I don't think that that's unique to porn. Um, in fact, we see this, um, uh, reflected in all of our media. Our, our approach towards, uh, b the body is not, um, is not just a porn thing. That is very much a societal issue that's larger and porn as a part of our society inherits those issues. Should it be addressed? Absolutely. But that doesn't make it porn's fault. So, um, yeah, uh, I think also, that's most uh, of it. Also, just to be clear, I said no slurs, so please do not say League of Legends again on this platform. You got it. I won't. I think that's everything. Wonderful. Now it's going to be Joe Lewis. Yeah, um, as a, as a lovely patron of Amy Anderson, Pinky, and Sarah J, I'm very versed in helping actresses directly and supporting them. With that being said, um, I have some just general thoughts of, about this conversation, so I'm just going to kind of spitfire it, and then let's see where we go with it. Um, I think that reducing or trying to get rid of altogether sexual exploitation and porn should not be at the expense of sex workers. Um, to We can extrapolate that as much as we want in the open. Yeah. Um, additionally, I think sex work is part of the gig economy, and it should be respected as such. Um, teaching young people about sex is too important to get wrong. So if we elaborate on this a bit, right? Sexual education can counter what kids learn from porn, but there seems to be this sort of problem where teachers are apprehensive of approaching this topic head on. And they'll sort of categorize it in terms of risky topics, which is kind of like brushed upon a little bit earlier in the conversation about like teaching, like having um, pornography that is safe for children. And when that, when you hear that statement, it's very easy to get very social justice worry and think like, oh, you're going to show kids porn. And that's not the argument that educators are making. Um, further, like if we understand that pornography can lead to potential harm, then we must make sure that sex, sexual education, sexuality education is taught in schools and it should be a priority within school curriculum to get it right. Um, those are kind of general thoughts I have. So I guess on a, it's a party, I guess. Wonderful. Um, now I'm going to throw it over to Kat. Yeah. yeah, so I don't think pornography is uh, harmful. Uh, I don't think that because uh, Data doesn't think that, and I, I do them facts and not them feelings, you feel? Call me Ben Shapiro with Black. Um, hey, welcome, that, Vaughn. Um, I Good think to see porn you. is also um, helpful in general for um, some people uh, like with different types of um, just different types of neurodivergencies. 
for example, I myself don't like would have never naturally known how to do anything because I don't know how to naturally do anything. Like uh, it was only because like people telling me, hey, like, yeah, Fawn's here. Hey, you Constance. Done this yet, you should probably do this. That's and then they're I'm like, how, how do I learn about it? And they're like, you can go on these really cool websites. And I'm like, wow, okay. Because otherwise, like some of us just don't like naturally like you know have certain types of like um like sexual discovery so thus porn is necessary so i mean obviously there are harmful types of porn but then there's like nice types of porn such as like the stuff made for women where it's like hey a consenting adult would you like to consensually come here Trisha and man sir thank you so oh, much wait, for the tier one sub cute. deeply okay, appreciate yeah, that there's that type of stuff and it's not always just slam bam thank you man oh my god i dropped a pin on the floor <laughs> can you help me sometimes there's other stuff so yeah there's harmful stuff and then there's good stuff just like everything and everything is morally neutral and it's people that make it fucky so i think it's cool and if you don't like it you're just uh you know conservative bye okay now we're going to throw it over to maddie thanks black uh ben shapiro so um that fucking killed me. So, yeah, porn's great. It there's all different types what? of porn. There's porn for all the different things that what you like, is? but it's only good when it's being done, obviously, by consenting adults um, and people who aren't being exploited. This is why I am a big supporter of um, unionization efforts by sex workers. So, unionizing in order to protect their interests, in order to prevent exploitation oh. okay. um and when it comes to uh porn addiction i actually have a, a very close friend who uh s struggled with porn addiction but in that case it wasn't because of the porn it was because of like this person is an addict they've been addicted to other things and porn just happened to fill that space of a, a compulsive behavior and subsequent shame spiral um and i think blaming Lacatons, like like maybe isn't the the correct approach, and by just simply like severely limiting porn, hi Hans. Um, I don't know that that would do much to help people who struggle with that addiction. So I'm all in favor of making sure that porn isn't viewed by minors. Minors aren't being involved with it, preventing exploitation. I think a great way to prevent. That kind of exploitation is by encouraging sex workers to unionize. Mm. You know, I will say Hans is a great example of porn addiction, but in the other way, as in he can't <laughs> stop posting on Twitter. Okay, we get it. You can do a push-up. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Dylan. So I got a few things to say. So basically, I think one of the important questions to kind of ask to start up this sort of discussion and and it oftentimes is lacking i mean i i did sociology courses in university and it would even be lacking from uh, that sort of discussion is what do we mean by porn what type of porn i think oh, that that's no, an, an important go. consideration to look at here so obviously you have soft form porn you have only fans you've got hardcore you've got rape fantasy type porn You've got various different categories of it. And so a lot of discussions around porn, for example, will uh, debate over the extent to which it's uh, exploitative of women. And, I, I, you know, th and that's something that's a valid discussion to have. But then you've got categories of porn where men are exploited or men are objectified. So it varies across categories. As far as the pushback against conservatives who oppose porn, I've had to deal with this a fair bit recently, and I'm not sure what was sort of the spark in the culture, why all of a sudden we've got conservatives again, basically going back to like, you know, Irving Crystal arguments for the 70s talking about banning pornography, like as if we're going to ban pornography in the 2020s, how much of a, like, how much of a troglodyte would you have to be to do that? But then we can look at comparisons in crime rates, and we know that there are a lot of factors that go into reduction in crime rates. A lot of them. But I would posit to reason that one of the explanatory factors uh, in crime going down, uh, you know, and especially, uh, and there are a couple studies that I've looked through that have said, well, you know, there might be, and again, it's correlative studies, but there might be a decrease 
in uh, sexual crimes as a result of increased access to pornography, though that's something where that. the jury's still out on it. But we do know that crime roughly is down about 50% since the advent of the internet. Uh, as far as is it toxic? Well, some of it is and some of it isn't, and it, it depends on what we classify as toxic. But again, it's, it's similar in that sense. It's almost analogous to the conversation that we had about gamer toxicity, where it really depends. It varies by category of game. It varies by specific outlet. It varies by corporation, et cetera. Some, obviously, some porn studios can be incredibly toxic and others not so much. And, of course, you have independent actors there as well. And, and additionally, I think an, an interesting uh, concept to bring up here just before we get into the general dis discussion is that in contrast to a lot of the people that would sort of cast the aspersion that, well, it's, it, it's necessarily disempowering, uh, a lot of pornography can actually be empowering. I, I mean, it, it's the sort of thing that, it, you know, Surprise. can it be addictive to some? Good Absolutely. Night, actual it's just like rest. literally any substance can be, right? But mm -hmm. to others, you know, uh, you know uh, it, it can be also the sort of case where uh, you know, like in my own personal experience, uh, you know, I, I've shown uh, porn to partners before and we've had, you know, more interesting experiences based on that kind of stuff. It can also make your sex life more interesting. Porn. And I find, and let's be real here, a lot of the conservatives that are against it, um, they don't necessarily tend to have much of a sex life at all. I mean, that, that's true. Fond me too. With reactionary conservatism, not all conservatives, but social conservatism, absolutely. So thank you. Okay, now it's an open forum. Uh, you can engage in dialogue. I, yes, hello. Sparky, yeah, hello, yeah. Sparky, real quick, can you please clarify what you mean by reform porn actors? Do we have to do that? It, it it's good. It's good. There, there are several. There are several an, an, anecdotal uh, moments where you see former porn actors uh come out and actually talk about what is going on in the industry they refer to themselves sure, as sure reformed fine. porn actors i'm just going with what they call themselves so their definition is hey we used to be in porn and now we're not what what's the reform they're christian now who yeah. gives a fuck no, all right it, 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 like the reason why that is because the reason why that matters, right, is that we have mm -hmm. to understand that porn actors are still workers. They're still workers. So this idea that they're reformed is, is just a really negative connotation. And and again, like, oh, no. I don't think you're trying to dog whistle there, but I don't understand what you mean by reformed. Oh, why is everything was, a dog whistle, dude? Wait, 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 pause, pause. Connor, right? You're white enough. Okay, you don't need to also be a white knight on top of it. Okay, listen, okay? I'm just I trying understand. To, I'm trying to defend the honor of my beloved, you know, uh, pornographic lover, Aircraft Sparky. Right. right here, okay? I, I I think Aircraft can speak for himself, or his devil puppet can speak on behalf of him. Who knows? Lucy, Lucy is his name. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. Look, uh, it, it's very simple. Uh, there are people who have left the porn industry who have basically come saved. Born again, and they consider themselves to be reformed porn actors, actresses, and actors. And look, they talk about what has gone on in the industry. Like I said, it, what do you? I what do you mean by born again? Okay, who yeah, gives but, a fuck? Wait, 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 into your heart, <sighs> you become what is called born again. Okay, so you're saying oh that. Oh my god, so that is just like so, a common definition, okay, man. Okay, just, so just so that I'm understanding this, you're trying to say that individuals go into the industry and then they expose the potential problems within the industry. Is that what you're trying to say? That's pretty much yeah, what I said. Okay, can you describe a situation of, of somebody who is the, the sort of individual who's speaking out for the atrocities in the porn industry? Mia Khalifa, who gives a fuck? Oh, that was me. That was me, Angel Dust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Emily, several, Mia Khalifa has. There's been several. There's been several. Lie, such as? My God, I don't memorize porn people. Well, can you at least tell the situations that, of course that, that have been me. there? <laughs> Dude, Joe Lewis, you can fucking Google the goddamn situations. Are but, you but fucking kidding me right now? I'm not going to let a dumb fuck okay. just say dumb shit. Like, oh, well, there's okay, many so, examples right, so, of so people saying Yeah, that was me. And then I ask, like, what are you talking about? They can't quantify it. So I'll jump in right now. 
Okay, so basically we've had plenty of pornographic oh, actors oh, and actresses even oh, go on to sex positive. Right, that's that's fucking TOS. Okay, that's fucking TOS. Okay, okay, what okay. the fuck is that? Like, come on. Okay, now. okay, what, what okay, 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 okay. So we're, we're here to talk about for the porn industry, not watch puppet smash master. <laughs> so let's let's um. That's pretty much what was. You know known. what? I think I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna pull off of this and i'm just gonna throw it to the demon woman because what are you connor why are you what? looking so shocked i don't, i just don't want to engage on that anymore the engage on what the the abuses in the porn industry that joe no, Lewis just no, asked about no i did i wanted to move off of i just i think you can all benefit from a short rest okay demon mama uh, thank you for the pull out um so uh Look, I, I think it's important for us to distinguish between issues within the porn industry and issues with porn itself. The porn industry, like many of these other industries that we've talked about today, is very, very toxic. Um, there are all kinds of very horrible structures that exist. Um, and there are, of course, some uh, out, outlets and, and, and production houses and independent people who are doing really great stuff. But those, but like, I, I hope that we can all agree that there's a difference between the porn industry having issues and porn itself being problematic. Um, uh, if you were to ask me whether I would defend porn in its current state, I would say no. Um, but if you were to ask me to defend pornography, I would literally go to war over p protecting people's rights to have access to porn. I think that people have the right to uh to enjoy sexual art i don't think you can tell people not to enjoy that and you can't tell people not to make it um and if you do i'll do it anyway um and uh but 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 the problem that i'm having here is that it seems like there are issues with like it feels like there's a conflation going on between issues with the porn industry issues with individual members uh or groups within the porn industry and porn itself and it sounds like aircraft sparky is kind of uh, casting moral aspersions on the performers who'd make porn, whereas uh, Joe is sort of trying to get to the bottom of that. Now, I don't know if we're going to continue with that particular line of thought. I'm more than happy to discuss issues within the porn industry. I brought up the tube sites issue. I've brought up the revenge. I I've talked about revenge porn issues. Um, I've talked about compensation issues. Um, sex workers and performers are super, super undercompensated for the stuff that they do, and they have to do a lot of stuff at great personal risk. And I would also be totally open to discuss issues like how do we secure these sites and make sure that they're um, accessed healthily. Um, and I'm also willing to discuss what sort of things should be allowed to be depicted in porn. Um, but I feel like I don't know which one of those things people want to talk about. And it feels like right now we're mostly fixating on whether some people on the panel actually believe that porn itself is a moral wrong. So can I ask that question of, of people on the panel? Is it, a, is it a moral wrong that you're having an issue with? Okay, so um, there's people oh. raising your hands. I can write your name hand down, but you, it's also like an open form. Like you can respond. But I guess well, since that's not well. happening, I'll throw it to I'll throw it to Connor. And um, aircraft. If the puppet is raising his hand, you will have to respond using the puppet. I just want you to know that. I'm okay uh, with that. Okay, Connor. <laughs> then Kevin. Okay. All right. Moral? Is it moral or immoral? Okay. I just I just want to hit hit Connor on with this real quick. Okay, for every positive study that you have, there are negative studies. Literally just Googling top, like, top five results were literally from, like, uh, impartial sources that were basically saying that for every positive study, there's a negative study. We can't make sense of the data. There's too much noise. Okay? So I don't want people just out here saying that porn is universally good. It's just like marijuana. It'll cure your cancer. It'll, it, it'll fucking make you Superman. You can fly after you use CBD. No, that's not the case. But uh, the so, difference is, is that like, uh, I'm not scientifically illiterate, so like when I'm reading the studies, like I'm not uh -huh. just like pinpointing for things that make my like you know. Okay, then you and I can have we, you and I can have a really deeply interesting scientific based study about porn and the the negative studies versus the positive studies and why jerking off until you're fucking you're blind is actually awesome. Okay, thank you. So, I'll do it. Uh, all right. right, so so basically, Joe Lewis, the Thank reason you. why I interrupted multiple times and I was kind of being a dick about it is because, yes, I understand this mm. is Twitch.tv, and I understand that you guys are not used to, like, I don't know, conservatives or sex-negative people being in these spaces, uh. 
but they fucking exist. Yeah, I was Literally, a sex you negative share, person, like, 30, Connor. I was so a sex negative person 40, for 25 years. So do we have years. to walk down? Okay, so do we have to walk down like a fucking? I walk down this rhetoric because here's, rhetoric? here's what happens, right? So mm -hmm. righties will do this thing where they say, "Yeah, we should totally give protections to porn workers and sex workers. It's a totally just thing to do." But there's mm -hmm. so, but we also have to talk about these reform sex workers who are in these spaces, who are talking about the dangers within the industry. Then I ask, as somebody who is in these spaces, and hear this fucking rhetoric in my own family, what do you mean by reformed sex workers? And it's always this sort of connection to God, and that God is a justifiable thing, and they use that as a backdoor to justify the instruction of religion and Christianity in public schools. And they use that as an argument, as the way, instead of doing sex education, you need more education about religion in schools. That's why I pushed back so hard, because that's a I mean, rhetoric that I have to fight for my family wrong. every day. Okay, I would Ooh, rather like, you just I would rather you just walk me down that shit and then instead of trying to lead fucking Sparky down it. And oh. I will actually answer Demon Mama's question by responding to what you just said. Okay? Cool. So sure. Demon Mama asked us, do we think that pornography is immoral or or morally neutral or something like that? Mm -hmm. So the immorality that I uh, immorality, by the way, is just uh, good or bad. Okay, it's literally the study of good or bad. Okay, everybody has different definitions for what's good and bad, morality, blah, blah, blah. It's very boring. It's very philosophical. Okay, the I think the strongest arguments that your conservative family, without even really making it, uh, re really making these arguments, is that sex is one of the most powerful things that we have as human beings. Killing and sex are the only two things that we're obsessed with, and probably the reason why sex feels so fucking good. And the Food. reason why it's such a cornerstone of human life oh, this is, is because wild. it's procreating. Good to see you, now, by the way. Now, can you have sex without procreation? Of course. Yes. And you just have fun, sexy you missed times me, uh, you missed me and all that kind of shit. Chat. Sure. But a hyper-focus on only pre uh, pleasure and a hyper-focus on only the exploration of non-procreative sex is basically hedonism. And there's a whole bunch of potential negative side effects to a hedonistic lifestyle that needs to be explored and explained. And there's a lot of caveats that the moral foundations of our society that are rooted in Christianity and, you know, the Judeo-Christian fucking gobbledygook or whatever, that basically talks about how to structure a family, how to structure a society, how to have children, how those children should be productive in the future, and basically how to keep society going in a forward thing. Hmm. So the fear from a religious-based perspective is that if everybody starts being fucking coomers, if every sp everybody tries to be fucking um, Hasanabi, then society is going to collapse within a generation. What? So that's the fear. So I'll leave another, another, another fear. Yeah. Implying, another... implying that porn only exists for solo uh, consumption, by the way, too, which is also crazy. But I mean, yeah, be yeah I watched porn. I watched porn. Wait, 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 Kevin was next. I want to hear Kevin speak. Okay, yeah, thanks, Dylan. I'll say this. We're, we're, we're having a conversation right now, you know, mm -hmm. as uh, Demon Mama asked, and it's a good question, you know, who here thinks that pornography is immoral? That's a great question to ask. But, you know, I think that this should really be flipped. As I, uh, you know, uh, will talk about, you know, when we're talking about immorality, uh, there are there are a few studies that have been done that look at uh, the negative ramifications of pornography, and and they were self-reporting, and they found that that those that felt that porn was something to be ashamed of, but consumed it, felt worse. They had lower self-esteem. They had negative. You could say they had negative repercussions. Okay, everybody. Or negative mental health is a Kevin Castley fucks. I'm calling it. A huge problem there is that well, they were brought up in a culture where they were. He might want to nuke shame North Korea and Iran, but he fucks. Own sexuality, and that of course was inculcated from religion. And I'll say this: I'm not going to get into a big theological thing or anything. We shouldn't be asking is porn harmful and is porn immoral. We should rather be asking is religion harmful and is religion immoral. And I would argue Ooh. yes to both of them. So thank you. <sighs> you, you and I are going to do that a different day. GTF well, another <laughs> an, another argument that one of my relatives has is that porn is immoral because it advocates for the mixing of bloodlines. That's his argument. That's his argument. <laughs> he said that in Different. Thanksgiving, and that why he doesn't watch porn, and he doesn't want his kids to watch porn. Hey, Raci wait, racial that's shit. Why so, that's why yeah. I'm here. I'm yeah, that's like, his take. Like, so, well, so like scalding hot. Paterana's like now you see. Another take that exists in my family is that porn is illogical because it advocates for pre -permis promiscuosity. 
So you ought to not watch porn because you ought not to participate in that activity because it's a disgrace against God. Furthermore, if you <laughs> go you go forth from that path, you are not only disgracing your family, you're also disgracing Jesus Christ, and then it goes down these re- religiosity pa- passes. So I have the I have the eugenicist bloodline route in my family. I have the sanctity of family in my family, and I also have the um all all the in between. So like the reason why I push back on language so hard is because I've heard all of it. And like you can put a puppet to hide in your dumbass take, but it 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 concerns me when these like right wing social justice warriors say something is like wrong, well, this is wrong, we shouldn't do this, or even we su- I should support this. But when you get into the nitty gritty of going I never like, said anything was wrong. Okay, that 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 that's cool. That's that's cool, man. Like, you can, oh man, you're a grown ass man with a puppet. Oh like, man, my dude, you got wait, to fucking reinvent Why are we shaming? Why are we shaming right now? Wait, so wait, wait, so wait, 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 Joe. I'm very interested in hearing the pup. No, bring the fucking puppet back. I no, 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 no. Joe Lewis is has, no, has but I am, I am. I'm making a federal now executive yeah, order. Yeah, fuck the, the military, my dude. Is now so. a member of the panel, and I want to hear what the puppet has to say. It was speaking up. I want to hear it. It has not had a lot of time to talk. It's going by uh, panel rules. What's the puppet have to say? I'm losing it. It's very simple. No mm. one's claimed that porn was immoral. In fact. Sparky actually defended porn and just said there needed to be a paywall where children couldn't watch it. Of course, Joe Lewis is like, oh, well, religion is the problem. No, that is not the problem. What the problem is, is in immoral individuals trying to push sexuality on young children. And porn actually doesn't actually target children. But there are people who will sit there and try to go, yes, we need children to watch porn. Hell, we had a kind of a prominent little journalist actually talking about that yesterday. It is the normalization. This is the disgusting thing. Look, um, when it comes down to is porn moral or immoral, ah, that's a decision that that needs to that needs to be you know figured out within the family. The family determines what what they consider to be moral the and fuck immoral. What's going on here? Uh, I am so like, I have no problem with like general sex education in the classroom. But I don't think that any type of morality should be taught in the classroom whatsoever. That is actually for the family to figure out. And I know, Joe, you're gonna you're gonna probably say it's racist because not everyone has, you know, parents or something or Jesus other. Christ. What yeah, the fuck was that? Well, because I when I mentioned when I mentioned parental responsibilities on, on a Sunday what panel, the you said, fuck well, that's was racist. That? No, talk to me in the now. What the fuck was that? Was so, that what the fuck the, was that? You're, you're talking about here talking about how you sent how you simp out for for these for these uh these porn stars and I'm like cool I support sex you workers support yes yeah there's nothing wrong with that I don't care about that then why you fucking uh, racialize it so hard for no fucking racialize 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 is there a why is there a way I can pop in here? you are you that Jesus Christ my okay. dude just shut the fuck up okay don't ever so, um, address me again on this panel fuck you what? asshole okay 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 <laughs> so first I want to say. <laughs> Uh, that puppet's gonna challenge for the championship. I'm a big fan of the puppet. Um, uh, and I'm going to uh, raise your hand if you want to talk. Cause I, a lot of people. I mean, I'll to respond to that very generally, right? Like, okay. so. Well, I just asked sure. people to raise hands, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I will say what's directed at you, so you're gonna go. But I want to figure out the order after. So I'm gonna go. Cat, Demon, Mama. Maddie hasn't said anything like at all. So then Maddie, I think makes sense. Um, oof, I'm I'm leaving the boys out. Um, this is a, this is a girls club. Um, agent hasn't said anything in a while. Um, Kevin Connor. Okay, so I just uh, I never understand why there's this like thing that like right wingers like to do when we're like, what about the what about the kids? Like the the question itself doesn't really inherently like relate to kids at all. Like, as since kids weren't included, we can usually just assume that they're not. So we don't even need to talk about, like, age gating or, like, at what age can people, like, start looking at porn? Because, like, if that was what Dylan really, like, wanted to go towards, it would have said, at what age can kids see porn or something? But, like, what we're talking about is in its, like, in um in an um, objective sense, is it moral or is it bad or whatever? And, like, I, if most of us agree that it's not bad... Then, like, I don't really see.
exactly what we're having much of like a problem on here because like at the end of the day like you can have whatever like religious um like standpoint that you want on it but you also have to admit that we live in a country where not everybody's necessarily of your religion or religious at all and as long as we don't most of us don't have any type of moral qualms with it in a religious sense then like who cares like what i use to beat my meat as long as i'm beating it right because like at the end of the day like it is literally a human function to go ahead and coom and not everybody's married and not everybody has really good imaginations once again part of the reason why some of us use porn is because we don't have good imaginations some of us don't have like the like the typical human capacity or um to even think about some of these things and that's why we had to look at it in the first place and some of it us use it for coming like there's other there's different utilities for why people are using it mm-hmm. and if people want to fucking beat their meat to somebody getting dicked down watch by this i'm about to do something well fuck, like who cares like are they getting paid or is it consensual who, who gives a shit like don't look at it if you have such a problem with it demon okay Mama? yeah um i think coming is really good um i think people should probably do it more they'll probably be happier um i i i feel like the the like anti coomer stuff is um is often like and i i i i don't believe that connor was trying to do this by the way but i do think that the anti coomer stuff is usually just um another euphemism to say degenerate or deviant or other things like that um and um i don't know i i find this topic a little bit um confusing i'm not entirely sure uh what we're batting at but um but like porn is art there is there's you don't have to justify to every degree why you enjoy fucking coming um people enjoy that shit and they should and we should let each other make stuff and share it if individual if people have a problem with um porn where they get addicted to it yeah we should provide uh solutions for them just like anybody else um with regard to the question about like kids on porn sites I hate to tell you this, but fucking kids, uh, kids are all the fuck over the internet. Um, and it's really it needs to be parents. They can't really push this off onto the government. You have the easiest way to prevent kids from getting into porn stuff. And you also have the most power to actually just be like, Hey kids, this is a thing that exists. Um, you know, uh, be careful, be healthy. Don't, uh, don't get, don't get too far into it. Don't lose yourself in it. Bam. Um, and then of course, like, like I said, uh, porn is art. And if you don't believe me on that, if you don't believe me that porn is art, that like, not just that, that the performance itself is art, do me a favor, go read the invitation by in case and come back and let me know. I'm telling you that shit will change your life forever. Um, so yeah, um, enjoy it. And, uh, people should come more. Uh, porn is great. Um, the industry has huge issues just like most industries under capitalism. Um, and people who hyper moralize around porn are usually doing so based on this like strange um oh a great example of this is somebody like john doyle john doyle who is a um i don't even think it's fair to call him a crypto fascist he's just a fascist and he regularly implies he did a whole like three hour video documentary about porn being bad and he regularly implies that society is being shaped by someone through porn And if you know anything about anti-Semitic tropes, something that Nazis often do is they say that Jewish people are producing porn to encourage race mixing, which is something that Joe actually talked on. Um, That is a a a common anti-Semitic trope. And you see this being rehashed by all kinds of conservatives who you wouldn't necessarily consider Nazis, but who nonetheless adopt the uh, same rhetoric and the same structure of argument. So I think we should be very critical of that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. One moment. Uh, before I go back down the list, I just want to take a moment to say, hey, everybody in chat, putting together these roundtables is pretty difficult. Obviously, getting three last-second replacements was not easy, and it takes time to put the show together. And we are pretty behind for this month when it comes to subs and donos, and I appreciate any support you guys could throw towards the Dylan Burns TV brand. Uh, for next week's content, expect that we're most likely going to be doing a review of Tariq Nasheed's new film, Buck Breaking. Thank you, with, uh, with YMS. Also, uh, I believe it's Adams Ruins Everything. He's the movie reviewer dude. We should be doing a review with him, which would be pretty dope. Uh, we'll also be watching some Jerry Springer uh, episodes with Loner Box and doing a lot of other fun content. Thank you, Detroit uh, dude. Appreciate it. Interviewing some local political activists, uh, somebody on the local Prince George's County School Board, and somebody running for Annapolis uh, Ward 3. Uh, I would appreciate. Any support you could throw towards the channel as we continue to develop our content. 
We will also be having next week, Hippie Dippy. One of the topics would be should we preserve the nuclear family? So be sure, sure to turn in, uh, tune in for next week as we have some interesting topics come our way. Now, I wanted to go back to the list, and we're going to start with Maddie. Yeah, I think, so, this is a bit of a callback to Can't link it, Can't link it what, in chat, but... uh Joe Lewis was talking about earlier, how the sort of problematic nature of using a word like reform, yep. Can't link it in chat. that is something that some sorry. former foreign I'm actresses sorry. refer to themselves with. Like, the issue is that, and this kind of also goes back to... Um, I think it like the the discussion okay, one moment. about. I just, I'm I'm in trouble. I said, um, Adam ruins everything. That's the wrong Adam. I meant your movie sucks. That Adam. That's the wrong Adam. <laughs> That's gonna get me in some trouble. Uh, but he deserves it because he uh cut his ponytail. So I'll continue, Maddie. We can just edit that part out when you post this to YouTube. We'll edit It'll it. Geek, fine. edit this. You didn't edit it. Did that you? is yeah. a big difference. Damn you. <laughs> your movie sucks, Adam. I, I understand. But yeah, so I, I understand I why you get there. Why but... like uh language matters and we talked a little bit about this when referring to simone biles and while saying something like choked is problematic similarly referring to former porn actresses as reformed or you know saying of that she's a reformed whatever this has been a very odd problematic panel. because huh? it furthers the stigmatization of sex workers and seeing it as like being in the porn industry is must be inherently bad if people who have since departed that industry can be referred to as reformed. That it's is very problematic, odd. and it, it furthers that notion. So well, that's the way this is why so people be... say, I'm not done, I believe, it's so weird, thought I wasn't done. But um, this is why, like, even if they refer to themselves as that, I look, I'm not going to tell them to refer themselves differently, but when we are discussing this I'll be in right back. A, I need a to go to the bathroom. like we are right be now, right be mindful of how you word these things because that matters. You you have that kind of influence. Um, and again, I think one of the best ways that we can ensure that sex workers are protected, that their rights aren't being violated, and that we can also make sure that they are doing whatever work they're doing willingly and of their own volition is by pushing for unionization. So that's how I feel. And um, uh, no more puppets, please. I love the puppets. I honor. I unironically mm. love the puppets. I'm gonna see it uh, in my nightmares. The most leverage aircraft Sparky has in any negotiation with me is just saying I will bring the puppet. We're gonna throw it to Agent now. Yeah. So a few things, with Sparky. One of them. Imagine him singing Gold Digger in the puppet voice. Two. I I really think he was going somewhere good before he said you know reform. I think he was talking about critiques of the porn industry and what they do to the girls, which. You know, it's some pretty bad shit. Like, I'm in favor of uni unionizing sex workers, especially in the porn industry. Demon Mama said they were as well. And I'm sure others on the panel is extremely in favor of that. If we want to talk about exploitation of, like, 18-year-olds specifically or extremely young women, that would be also a great topic. I don't think we need to die on this hill specifically. But I feel like, we, you know, there's a lot more agreement that we can branch on to, like, actual talk instead of just trying to, like, get hung up on a single word. Yeah, as an example, right, there's 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 a handful of porn stars that found Christ, but they wouldn't self-describe themselves as reform. That's language that people within articles use to talk about these individuals. There is a problem, however, with this sort of um, dump culture that exists within the industry, where you'll have an individual who goes into the industry, will maybe do, like, the span of, a, of an actor is or actress, I should say, to be more specific, is around three to four months. And in that span, so they have very little say of what type of content so they're able to, to do for themselves because they're strapped to these very restrictive contracts. This is something that What's happened happening? to Lisa Ann. This is something that happened to Mia Khalifa. This is something that happened to, to a, a vast variety of, of porn stars in the 2000s and even as, and now still happening. And then we saw a reaction to that, right, where... Porn stars just took their content and did it themselves, right? So, like, Pinky was one of the first to do that, where she's like, fuck this, I'm going to just monetize my own shit because no one's gonna, no one's going to, like, AVN isn't gonna hire me, um, Vivid isn't gonna hire me, someone's gonna do my own content. And then that created a stream of individuals who were doing this for themselves. The problem is, they're just taking this and shifting it somewhere else. So instead of having AVN and Vivid dictating what you do in terms of content, you just have OnlyFans doing it. 
So then it's like, okay, there's like, and if we understand that OnlyFans is another sort of pseudo monopoly and that they're not really making as much money and there's not really any protections that exist within OnlyFans, there's problems within that. And, and that's one of my many concerns when it comes to protections for porn actors broadly. I do think, however, there's something to say about industry, like companies having individuals participate in openly hateful um only fonts <laughs> objectifying content as an example there are plenty um black actresses who argue that certain industries made them like have sex with people in confederate gear and stuff like that and don the confederate Oof. flag and that was just something that were allowed mia khalifa being in hijab and and that's just being the thing and that's not her choice that's the company's choice of making her do that and that's something that I don't think it's okay. I don't think companies should have the ability to tell these actors, like, you must do this thing that might potentially cause you harm internationally or even just cause you personal harm. And that's just something yeah. that they just continually do. So when I think of actresses and actors that outcry in these type of things, that's what I think about. I don't think about porn actors and actresses going to Christ. I'm thinking about the ones that don't have protections and get abused by the system and shout out every three to six months. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a huge labor problem that can be discussed in the in the porn industry. Uh, it's especially bad because of the level of the level of coercion and 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 the fact that a lot of people uh, turn to uh, porn because it sells. You know, so you need the money, you have the work, and people can put you in a position. This is something that we have again. This is an issue that's shared across multiple industries, but it is particularly bad in porn. Um, and I think it's something that we should take seriously. Porn is another one of those industries that suffers from the same uh, thing that I brought up earlier about um, video games and also something that we brought up about film. Somebody brought up uh, in the last conversation about film, which is that uh, our society kind of treats it as something frivolous, like, oh, movies are fun. That means the industry that makes the movies, you know, should be considered like fun or frivolous, but it's not. And um, these are how these things are made are is sometimes dangerous and 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 needs to be needs to have protections. I think that if we took things like that more seriously, if we saw people who work in these industries who produce this stuff with a little more respect, and we took um, you know as a society, we can do it as individuals. Again, I I always advocate for people to support porn uh, you know porn performers and sex workers directly. Um, like that's an awesome way. It, you know, to do, to do things. That's super great. If you can go to their Patreon, if you can go, whatever, um, is super awesome. Um, but like as a society, if we encourage people being more caring about like the source of the thing that they're enjoying to some degree, um, I think that we'll have more scrutiny, um, on the labor conditions. We'll perhaps see the availability of, of, uh, porn actor guilds or something along those lines or unions or, um, you know, co-op porn production structures that allow uh, individuals to have more um, input in these things. But as it is right now, I mean, most of porn is controlled by one company, if I remember. Like most of the tube sites, the biggest company in porn is like MindGeek or something. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. the way that they do it is they wait for, um, you know, they wait for people to upload stolen stuff to their site. And then, you know, it, hey, if nobody reports it, it just stays up there making them money. Um, so people might actually put a lot of money and put themselves on the line to make a piece of art that's really wonderful, uh, you know, or whatever, or something that's just kind of tacky and cheap, but it doesn't matter. They're, they're getting, uh, you know, exploited. I think we need to address exploitation on a level that's not just like, there's this, I'm sorry to be, if I'm a little rambly on this, but it's something that frustrates me, which is that, um, and, and Joe has touched on this a little bit, which is that there's this like bait and switch that's done where you say, Hey, the porn industry is super exploitative. And then, like, all of these religious righties who want you to, to never have sex and lock your dick in a chastity cage for the rest of your life um, will sort of pop out of the woodwork and go, yeah, porn is exploitative. And you go, no, 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 wait, the porn industry is exploitative. Porn itself is neither necessarily exploitative or non-exploitative. It's a, it's a type of thing that you can make. And I think that we need to be careful about what we're talking about. The labor conditions in the porn industry and in sex work are ridiculously exploitative. But that requires us tackling exploitation as a concept, not like, you know, whether God wants you to jerk your dick or not. Um, and I, I do think that, um, again, I, I, I think it's something we need to, as a society and as, you know, uh, 
advocates here talk about that and recognize that like, hey, porn may not be exploitative, but the industry can be. Uh, the industry can be exploitative, but porn itself might not be. Would you say that the entire, uh, or for the most part, your entertainment industries would be considered exploitative? Or exploited. Um. Yeah. Ab disgustingly. So. Absolutely. I have. Uh. You know. I. I went to school for film. I ended up working in streaming. Um. And. Uh. You know. And I love video games. Yeah. Those industries are very, very exploitative. Um. And they yeah, get away with ex common thing. Yeah. It's super common. But they get it. But it's. It's pr really. It can have really bad. It have like atrocious outcomes. And the exploitation is. Uh, particularly bad in entertainment industries, once again, because there's this idea that, like, art or entertainment is not essential to our society, even though it is, even though we all surround ourselves with media at all hours of every day, whether we're listening to stuff on our headphones or on the radio, on the bus, or looking at, at pictures outside or paintings or whatever. We're constantly consuming our art. is hugely important for the maintenance of the human psyche. And yet we still treat it with this thing like, oh, it's a dream job to go get to work to work at a company like Blizzard. Or, oh, it's a dream job to get to be the social media manager for Pornhub. OK, maybe, but it's still really exploitative. And you can't let companies get away with this idea that like, oh, well, this is an entertainment industry, you know, like you can't let them get away with that as an excuse to further exploit people and to not give people the rights that they deserve as workers. So you do, do you believe that it is the nature of the entertainment industry itself that is exploitive, or do you think that it is just a few bad actors? Oh, no, I think it's the nature of capitalism. If we want to go that far where, where exploitation comes from, we can talk, we can break this right open into the capitalism discussion. The way that we structure uh, labor in our society as a whole pervades um, every industry, but it becomes readily apparent in, in uh, entertainment industries, specifically because um, there is like a two-facedness. On one hand, we we recognize that entertainment and games are the products themselves, perhaps a little bit frivolous, maybe a, a tiny bit. You know, a, a, a DVD of like Paw Patrol seems kind of unimportant in comparison to somebody's life-saving medication, obviously. But the people who make that shit and the people who do consume that shit are people. They're humans. Um, and we have to think about that and recognize that and i think that without analyzing labor without analyzing exploitation as a whole it's very hard for us to confront this i think that what some people like to do is instead of recognizing that we have some seriously fucked up structures as to how we determine um who gets what when something is made um that instead uh people will pivot to things like oh well no it's the porn that's the problem let's get rid of the porn let's let's clamp down on the porn well it's like no actually the problem is that uh, there's a huge population in the United States that needs money to survive and everybody's got to do different things and some people end up doing entertain entertainment things but they still need to pay their food so at the end of the day whether they're working in entertainment uh, making a frivolous product or whether they're working in a factory manufacturing a needed product that person still has needs of their own that person is still being forced into different conditions by their boss who pays their bills so yeah, I, I I don't think it's a, a few bad actors. I think this is something we need to think about on a larger scale because it, it does, again, it just becomes very apparent in entertainment because we have a two, we have a, a, a double standard with how we handle the importance of entertainment and and how we treat workers who create our entertainment. Okay, um, oh, wait, wait, we are going to have to be wrapping up soon, so I want to make sure that those who are on the list get to talk, and that's going to be Kevin and Connor and... Cat, you weren't on the list. Were you on the list? Let me check. Oh, you should have been on the list. So I'll put I you have on small the list. hands. Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. So I just wanted to address a couple points. Uh, first one, uh, directed at uh, Counterpoint. Uh, he, he had referred to hedonism. I'll say this. Uh, better to be a hedon, whatever that means, than a drag con, obviously. True! I think that the absolute uh, mental health implications negative mental health implications of uh trad con culture <laughs> the attempts to bring us in a retrograde direction to inculcate children into basically cultures of shame shame over things that they can't even control shame over things that are good especially the you know the the shame over sexuality that you see in in religion especially all this is a is a negative 
and that in and of itself definitely contributes to some of the negative uh, negativity as i mentioned with respect to consumption of pornography is that if you live in a shame culture and you feel ashamed of the consumption well it makes sense that you might have some negative health ramifications but we know and there are studies that have been done on this that show that uh across the united states for example the conservative states uh they tend to you know have uh, the the most viewed pornography category be that Punk which is historically or Lauren X pandemic actually era, okay on this panel. You can look at some of the southern states where you know uh, what's one of the categories that's really popular. One of the categories that's really popular is uh, interracial sex. Well, but part of the problem uh, there is that historically speaking, people were stigmatized against that, and so if, if somebody grew up with racist parents, for example. They might feel bad, uh, but you know they might be interested in that as well. But now they're going to feel bad over it because they've got a bunch of racists in their life that that might shame them if they were to find out, or at least they feel that shame even if they don't tell anybody. You have incest, I think, is the number big one in in Mississippi. Now, I'm not saying legitimize incest, but it does go to show you that we want to talk about hedonism. We want to talk about oh, well, the libs and the progressives or whatever or like degenerate and all that kind of stuff look at the conservative states look at what goes on in a lot of conservative states where uh you know you got very trad con cultures that lead to things like uh you know incest being the most searched uh, category, <laughs> for example. And, and that of course would be counterproductive you can talk about uh as it related to uh the misogyny and the exploitation in porn and i'm not talking about the industry here but you know, and I'll just say, just to finish that other part up, but yeah, you're better off to be a heathen than a reactionary, absolutely. But as far as the True. critics of porn, a lot of the critics True. of porn or a lot of the True. advocates of banning pornography, they'll talk about porn as being misogynist. And and some of the examples that they will point to uh, might well be clear-cut case of misogyny. Look at what those people's stances on abortion is. Look at what those people's stances is, just in more broad terms, of course. Like, ask them about what their view of gay marriages, etc. Look at how they feel, you know, about women in the workplace, that kind of thing, and then see if their if their criticism of porn is coming from a place of actual concern, or if they're just concerned trolling disingenuous acts. So anyway, that's what I got to say there. So thanks. Okay. Next is going to be Connor, and then Cat. Then a special I, message from Dylan Burke TV. I can do mine as a part of closing. Okay, Cat. Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to push back really quickly on something that Agent Ten said like a while ago about like how this industry is like exploiting a lot of eighteen-year-old girls. Like, what? <laughs> like, I I understand. I I guess there's like this weird cultural thing where we're always like, oh no, like the woman, like eighteen-year-old guys are being exploited too. Or and if you think it's an age thing, then young people are being exploited. And if you think it's a woman thing, then Hey, that's yeah. awesome. Good like, for Gabby. I would say there's a very Take large your time. push within like porn specifically for 18 year old girls, and I use that. I got as a called in on yeah, a hippie probably dippy. unionize. So like, I, I don't know why. Yeah. That, I don't know where that. Well, there's came also from. there's also 18 year old men that are also like in, involved in sex work. I see the same exploited. six guys in all the porn that I watch. Then I'm pretty sure there's like. You must not watch a lot. I, you know. You just heard. Well, I will say that I see a. A diversity of men in mine. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I, do, but I, I would say it's kind of obvious. To say there's a okay, we can, I mean, do we want to talk? Do we want to talk about the yikes takes that porn actors and actresses have? Some uh, have, well, well, some have no no list. We have to, they, to the end. We have to. We yeah. have to wrap it up. We're already 15 <laughs> minutes over. So, um, Kat, um, where, did you finish your take or do you want to continue? I mean, I just think it's exploitative no matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter if you have a teen or a vagine. If you're 18 years old, you're a, sometimes you're just making decisions that are, like, you know, not entirely thought out, and sometimes you're not thinking about the consequences, and it doesn't really matter whether or not you have tits. It can be exploitative no matter what, and I don't really... No, it's if we like, broke down the demography of the industry, I guarantee you it'd be, like, 20 to 1 female to male. Almost guaranteed. It's definitely Sorry. not 1 to 1. Yeah. That's also, nice. we agree on this. We agree on this. I don't know why you're trying to make it like a pissing competition. It's like it's no, it's equal. It's it's got to be a fifty fifty ratio. It's like no, I'll, it's kind of obvious. Until the day I die. All right. Like, hopefully not on video. Okay. So now mm -hmm. we're going to uh, wrap up the show, but quickly, I just wanted to give a message to I'm everybody confused. at home. So uh, recently, uh, I had a phone call 
with my uh, father, uh, who was basically tell me, telling me about certain skepticisms he had about vaccinations and vaccines and about whether people should get vaccines. The thing is, he has lung cancer. He is in the highest risk group possible when it comes to COVID and the effects it can have on people. If he got COVID, he would just die. And for me to hear that from him um, was was very uh, scary, to be quite honest. Thankfully, I, w I was able to talk him away from these positions and explain to him, uh, like, hey, like, yes, there are people who catch COVID after getting vaccines, but it drastically reduces out. We have to talk about that after so this. I just wanted to say that if you have the chance... Please talk to your elder and most vulnerable populations about the importance of getting this vaccination uh, in your family, the people that you love and the people who you believe love you. Get your jab. Um, because you know what? Get your you jab on Tuesday. But uh, it'll be a lot more frustrating to see them hooked up uh, in a hospital. So I just wanted to give that uh, message at the end of today's stream, even though it wasn't part of the topics. So we're going to wrap up today's stream. I'm going to give everybody an outro, starting with a Agent Ten. Going over to him. Well, thanks so much for having me on the panel. It was fun for the most part, guys. Um, if uh, anyone wants to find me on Twitch, it's Agent Ten. Uh, it's Agent underscore Ten underscore. Video games, politics, dissecting media stuff, movies, music, uh, TV shows, all that fun stuff. If you want to find me on Twitter, it's Agent Ten underscore TTV. It's a lot of fun stuff. I make some jokes. I shit post with some memes. I create some memes. Even some Dylan stole in the past, so they gotta be good. Follow me. False accusations. Are we throwing over to Aircraft? Alrighty, I'm Aircraft Spark. You can puppet. find me. Uh, the, the puppet. Puppet has, has her own outro. Uh, <laughs> I'm Aircraft Spark. You can find me on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Aircraft Sparky, Twitch.tv slash Aircraft Sparky. Of course, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, the link should be in the in the description or at the end or whatever. Danabo will take care of all that. It's uh, a spark of a Nova One uh, is the at, at deal. I do political commentary. I do animation. I do art. And, of course, I occasionally do these uh, these little discussions. And uh, I guess people get upset with some of the things I say. It's all good. Uh, uh I just want to say, Dylan, I, I saw that on Twitter about your father, man. I'll, I'll probably uh, do that. put him in my prayers, man. I hope everything works out well for him. Appreciate it. Now I'm going to throw it over to Counterpoint. Yeah, so I, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Dylan from a financial standpoint. Um, we all love our buddy Prime, who I'm on his show uh, pretty regularly. We also love our buddy Hans. But Dylan does some of the best contact, content on Twitch.tv, one of the best moderators. So I think that uh, if you have the ability to support him, I would appreciate True. it. True. Uh, we got the, more after this, everybody. Dylan Remember, Burns, this isn't the end. Not even close. And happy and happy. Not even close. Um, and then what I would say, too, is I have an under 30-year-old. He's in his late 20s family member who caught COVID, is now on life support. Um, I also have a brother-in-law who is uh, not getting vaccinated despite having childhood asthma uh, because of the propaganda that he's consumed. And literally, my conservative, even my conservative family is basically yelling at him, like, hey, this is a major risk. Get your shit together. I'll show you get what vaccinated. Got. And unfortunately, he's been brainwashed by YouTube people to the point that he's not going to do it. So, uh, fuck that. Take care of your people. Yell at them. Uh, because, like you said, it sucks more to deal with them uh, during serious medical crises rather than having an uncomfortable conversation at dinner. Um, so go ahead and do that. Um, so, yep, if you want to follow me, uh, I'm on Twitter, ConnorPoints, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S. Watch you can this, also everybody. Just go into YouTube, type in ConnorPoints, common spelling. Uh, we're about to break 8K, very exciting. Um, and uh, basically, I think I'm going to have to take some of y'all on on your uh, hedonistic bullshit and uh, your anti-theism one day, uh, but not today. So thank you very much for coming out, having fun. I appreciate all y'all. Wonderful. Now we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Everyone, my name is Demon Mama. You can follow me at the link on the screen right here. But I want to end this by saying, you want to know what you can do? You got some money laying around and you're, you want to get your dick hard or your pussy wet or whatever else you want to get uh, pleasurable? 
Go fucking support. Give the Dylan Burns TV. Go oh, give okay. that money well, to some way, trans no. porn stars directly because they would love to have that support. And uh, guess what? You'll be doing t- you'll be doing two things. One, you'll be supporting someone directly, and two, you'll be taking money out of the pockets of giant abusive exploitative porn companies support porn directors support porn artists directly you got a weird kink we all got weird kinks pay your fucking artists those artists break their backs making that weird shit for you fucking pay them pay them directly it's cheaper than you think just take the time to do it i'm serious you'd make a lot of change in the world all right thanks everybody and uh come on by afterwards we're uh gonna be doing some q a and some other stuff okay we're gonna be throwing porn. over to porn sansol joe lewis yeah, twitch.tv slash Joe Lewis, the O's a zero. Uh, I currently have a fundraiser going to help just raise raise some funds towards a trip that I'm doing to Loudoun County, Virginia. I have a bunch of content lined up in terms of that Porn county, is which based, has been I agree. the center of the culture war around critical race theory and gender affirmation. So I'm going to go see a anti-CRT session with Dr. J- James Lindsay to see what that looks like in the, in the Wow. Video. That's so yeah, I'm doing one. that in a couple of weeks. So if that's something you want to look out for, check check the channel out. We kind of made Loudon County this little project. Um, if not, you can just see me argue on Twitter with um dumbass tankies and reactionary social justice warrior righties at twittercom slash Joe Lewis. Same thing. It was zero zero. So glad to be here, and hopefully to see you guys soon. Okay, uh, I want to give it over to Katarana. I'm Katarina. I am, yeah, I do leftist politics, but I also happen to be a physicist, and I also am Dylan Burns' babysitter. So, if you like Dylan, you'll probably like me, because he doesn't seem to hate me. And also, Dylan, don't forget to, like, make up your day. Wait, the last one is Joe Lewis. This is why I'm gay. I'm gonna throw it over to Maddie. Yeah, hi, I'm Maddie Cakes. Um, You can find me on Twitch as uh, MaddieCakes underscore. You can also find me on Twitter or Instagram as Mads Maru. That's spelled M-A-D-S-M-A-R-U. I really enjoyed this panel today. Um, Nightmarish, puppets aside. Yeah, Joe's awesome. And um, porn is great and a good time. And so is uh, masturbation and sex in general. It's a great time. I'm very pro all that. So, True. you know, knock yourself out. Have a great time. And, yeah, thank you. Do your best to not actually pass out while engaging in such conduct. Uh, I'm going to throw it over <laughs> to Kevin Cassie. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. So I just want to give a, uh, you know, uh, a shout-out here to Dylan Burns as well. I noticed your channel just passed 30,000 followers on Twitch. That's pretty base, so congrats, uh, Dylan. Uh, that's that's a big God wants you to go. Congrats there. Thanks for having me on again. Always great to be here. Uh, so basically, I, as I said in the intro, I run the channel Superpower Broadcasting on YouTube and Twitch, and I, I I do daily premieres over to YouTube, and I do daily live streams to Periscope, Twitch, and uh, YouTube, of course. So uh, make sure you're subscribed so you get daily content, and I mostly talk about foreign policy, international relations and security issues but i've been more branching out lately to talk about some economics as yeah, well yeah of course i have punk corpse a lot of there's actually issues. better products I'll out say there this just to kind of close up here uh pornography is base reaction is cringe and i'm going to be doing a post show over on not Super just people being polite in about half an just hour people so being polite old fa- to tune facts. That. And if you'd like to debate me you can shoot me a dm on twitter at kevin castley and we'll set up a debate thanks everybody for watching and thanks for having me on again Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and uh, everybody at home for watching. Uh, We will be here next week with one of the topics being should we preserve the nuclear family and a whole host of interesting guests. See you guys next week. I'm sending you guys over to Gappy. Have a blessed one. See you later. Have a good day. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Okay. Thanks for having me on. That was was fun, Dylan. Um, Yeah, I I hope the best for your for your father, no doubt. And Demon Mama, it was a pleasure. Oh, thank it was, you. It was, it was an experience. Yeah, this was a, well, I mean, it was a, we pulled it together at the end, but yeah, it was a little, uh, you know, real well, last minute. There the three cancellations yeah. with the three main stars. It was fucking the whole event. Yeah. With Hunter Avalon. Damn, good thing you got a bigger Jake, one. And Denims. Like, oh my God.
I think all three. It was like Jesus. Well, fuck. Yeah. No, your Sorry. team. Your team did a great job. I am so glad that they brought Demon Mama on. Demon Mama, I, I did enjoy it. I, I yeah. loved our little interaction in the back. But no, I wasn't arguing for it on the religious aspect at all. I mean, I, uh, I I will say I was a little confused as the direction that that um that the conversation was going with regard to the porn. But hey, I'm I'm always happy to talk about porn. Uh, I like it a lot. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had no problem with it myself. I I think entertainment industry is just exploitive. Period. I I used to work in music, so I've seen what it does. Yeah, entertainment industry is messed up. Chews mm -hmm. people up and spits them out. Yep. Uh, yeah. Dylan, it was great. Uh, thanks for. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to come in and be your dark star after all of the other stars dodged <laughs> out. Um, I, I hope you have a that. really good night. Yeah, of course. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank huh? you very much. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Um, you need to make a like a demon puppet now. We need like Do multiple. I? Like we need we need all streamers to start making puppets. I like. Thank you so much, puppet. Maddie. Oh yeah, you have Lucy. I've got Lucy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that one's so uh, it's not as hot as me. So, well, yeah. you know, you know, Demon Mama, if, if you'd like, I could, I could probably put one together for you. Well, but that, that's up to you. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I do stuff. I that's, that's all that's I'm cool. saying. That's cool. Maybe, maybe we'll talk about it. Uh, uh, all right, right, I'm gonna head out now. Thank y'all. That'd be fun. See you later. Bye, Bye. for now. That was nice. That was a nice. Okay, so that was that was interesting. Um that was an interesting one. <laughs>